So everyone's here now. Everybody is his. Yeah, what are we doing? Um, what was what was I... playing? Academy. There's somebody Stop. playing outside. Marching westward. Ron, are you playing outside? Outside. He's got a fan. Oh. Who's this creepy guy next to Dobson then? It looks like the tattoo guy. Is it? Like him? Maybe it's his brother. Is it Dave? Dave. Dave the Orc Trader. You know the best way to find out who people are, right? True. Stab them in the face. <laughs> Sup. Hmm? Is Bron here? Yes. yes. Can you not hear me? I can now. Go over and ask. Well, I say, hello, Dobson. Can I get a health potion? Um, where's my character taken? I don't know. I'll be bummed. Mm, I don't think so. Oh, no. Graham, I hope you, uh, leveled the difficulty for the session to account for Griff dropping out. Nah, Griff was never in. Silly. Griff was never in the session. Oh, well, he's just said he's not going to be able to make it. Cool. Uh, I hey, just assumed it's... that was the case. Hey, it's Rogar, and I can't click him. Oh, it's just need so needy, aren't you? <laughs> I can't even see him. Where is he? By the town hall. Ah. Oh, yeah, so he is. Um. Right. Okay. So, uh, Bron, as you walk up to uh, Dobson, you uh, you immediately notice him in uh, in a fairly deep conversation with uh, Alfan, uh, who Alfan. who you recognise from your your dealings with him. Uh, as you walk up and I'm, I'm, announce I'm not... your requirement for a health potion. Uh, no, I was going to say if they both busy... sort of turn, turn and look at you and, and say, uh, oh, uh, uh, oh, yes, uh, uh, hello, Bron, well, one, one moment, one moment, and uh, sort of immediately start talking back to each other again. Um, they seem to be in mid-conversation about um, some sort of bandit trouble. I was going to say, if they're busy talking, I don't interject. Oh, I want yeah. to listen to what they're saying. <laughs> All right, so you hear them talk about... Um, you, you hear um, Alfan is explaining to Dobson how a, uh, a bandit party has taken over a, uh, a piece of uh, a stretch of road up to the uh, northeast. Um, and he was uh, basically just telling him how the, they seem to be uh, asking people who travel the road to, to pay to get past. At this point, they sort of stop and, uh, and involve you in the conversation. Doesn't sound like something we'd be interested in. We're looking for the academy today. He says, "Oh well, um, uh, I, I, I thought well, maybe you could, uh, you could swing by there first and see if you could, uh, uh do something about it. You know, uh, s sort them out in your uh, ruffian types. I'm sure we could uh, come to some sort of a reward. What's a reward? Oh, reward. Well, um, uh, and he sort of Dobson looks over at Alfan and Alfan says, well, um." I tell you, I could uh, leave you a hundred gold pieces each here with uh, Dobson. And if you could uh, sort out the issue, uh, I'm sure the local traders would be uh, much appreciative. Yeah, we can do that. So hang on. How many of us are there this session? One, two, three, four? Three. 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 Three hundred gold? Yeah, that sounds reasonable. I'm up for that. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Fantastic. Fantastic. But, um, hang on, hang on. So we always run into these things. Let's ask lots of questions. How many? Where? Why? And uh... <laughs> I often sort of look at you and say, "Well, I, uh, I don't know. This has been uh, been coming around the immediate network. I've rushed over to tell Dobson before he uh, before he uh, has the uh, displeasure of finding it himself. Um, I've heard it's a uh, a small bandit encampment. Not too many. Uh, they seem to have a, a fierce leader." Uh, I believe the leader's name is Giles Neville. Uh, uh, I see uh, him and his uh, 
merry men, as you could say, uh, have uh, established a uh, toll booth two days east of here. Obviously, we... this is impacting our supply routes. How much are they charging? Didn't we this have toll? dealing? Oh well, uh, sometimes it's uh, can be as much as your entire stockade. Uh, I tell you, uh, it's been quite quite a quite a difficult stretch. And the yeah. road is uh, quite important. The uh, the forests around, not many of us uh, travelled through them, unlike you adventurer folks. Has anybody seen these? Have the, uh, do they recognise the uh, the company the bandits belong to? They wouldn't have acorns on their shirts or anything? I, I, no, I don't believe they are part of the uh, the green acorns. Or who are the other ones? The, uh, I think the... these are a, uh, a plucky sort of... Uh, reprobates you know trying their luck so to speak who was not they wouldn't be the night blades again would it sorry the night blades you broke tasty, up pete. Sorry. tasty uh, pete and the night blades it wouldn't be them hello have i gone you have not i, have I not. can hear you i don't think graham has a working line at the minute oh uh, yeah it's definitely graham <clears throat> Ah, oh, the benefits of a broadband internet <laughs> connection. I thought we got a new router. It was all right last time. Maybe it's the line. Uh, all that I know is I'm sat behind a, a proper business line at the minute, so it's definitely yeah. not me. I can't believe he gets two-hour Amazon delivery but doesn't get internet. <laughs> That's terrible. Perhaps he's talking to himself right now and doesn't realise we can't hear him. It's when it's when the map changes and like we, we roll in, <laughs> he rolls initiative and we're like, uh, what? <laughs> hey, I think he's here or he's typing. Yeah. Ask. It's me, your flaky <laughs> DM. <laughs> back sorry i was was probably responding to you as you couldn't hear me what uh, was questions Go for um it. sounded like I w we wondered whether this might be the night blades and tasty pete ah i know uh, so uh the uh, fan sort of explains to you that he doesn't think it's uh, any particular tribe or or gang it's just a, a plucky bunch of reprobates who have kind of taken it upon themselves to form a bandit group right okay well, it sounds like a good plan. I'm up for this. I need to get some potions from Dobson there. He says, oh, yes, 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 of course. Uh, take these. And he hands you uh, a couple of health potions. He says, that, cool. should, uh, that should see you well. And he uh, oh, looks at okay. Rogar and he says, oh, Rogar, uh, looking, looking much stronger. And he says, uh, oh, yes, I, um, I, uh, I got that stuff that you, uh, you were asking for. It's, uh, it's here. And he, ha he hands you a... Uh, uh, a fairly small bag. Um... Oh, thank you, Dobson. So, a couple of health potions. Does he want any money for it? No, 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 no. It's uh, uh, you saw out these bandits, and they're on the house. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. All right. Well, I've got two health potions then. What did My, Rogar? Uh... Ro Rogar's kind of looking intensely. Um, uh, fuck, um, Alfan. And uh, like looks at him and says, "Are you a dragonborn?" He says, "Ha ha ha, Ruga. Uh, nice, nice to meet you." And he bows quite. He says, "My name is Alfan, and I am 
a Lizardalian. And he sort of bows quite deeply. And then he says, and your name is Rogar, I hear. Yes, I've just come to Flamescar. Ah, from anywhere interesting? Uh, I've been in Bastion Bay for a while, and before that I was on a ship. Ah, what ship did you sail on? Uh, it's called the Crimson Surf. <laughs> the Crimson Surf? I have heard of this. A merchant ship, nonetheless. Yes, uh, merchants. <laughs> yes. He says I... with slightly shifty eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and you find yourself here on dry land. How is it treating you? Uh, I much prefer the uh, being able to sleep without rocking from side to side all the time. Ha! Yes, I was never too adept at this either. So, <clears throat> so are we uh, going to head off and find these bandits then? Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Northeast, I think he said, didn't he? Yes, 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 that's right. Uh, up to the, the northeast. Um, if you keep heading, uh, well, uh, uh, if you head up to the uh, the ruined bell tower and, and turn sort of north northeast, you'll be uh, you'll be there before you before you know it. I think All it's right. a good couple of days, though. Uh, but you'll. Uh... Okay. Sounds like a good idea. Let's let's do that then. Okay, yes, yes, well, uh, good luck, good luck. Uh, let me know if you find anything of interest. I'll soon sell it for you. <laughs> yes. Mm. Uh, yes, yes, good luck. Oh, Adventures. before we go, we found, we've got that bottle of ink. Ink? Ah, very interesting. We have a bottle of ink. We'd be interested in maybe getting a tattoo from you, but um, you're kind of hard to track down. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, quite. Although I am often, often around when needs must. Okay. Do you want me to uh, pop by when you uh, when you get back? Um, either that, or tell us a way we can get hold of you. Well, I am not one who can be often got hold of. I uh, no. drift around from place to place. You see, right. Okay, well... I do pass here fairly often, though, so... Uh, all right, well, next time you're going past, pop, pop in, and uh, we'll talk to you then. Okay, okay. It. Marvellous. Fantastic. Okay. A pleasure to meet you, Rogar. Uh, pleasure to meet you, too. All right. Okay, so you guys gonna head out? You wanna do anything? Yes. Else? How how many health potions do we get from Dobson? I've got two he gave us. Cool. Which we can okay. use. That should be alright. Actually, does somebody wanna carry the other one? Just in case I'm knocked out or something. Uh yeah, I'll grab one. Okay, so you grab grab one and I'll keep hold of the other one. Marvellous. Health potion. One. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay. Let's, let's head out. All right. So you head out of Flame Scar and you head um, head out of the north, and out through the agricultural district, past Acres Farm. Uh, you head out up towards the ruined bell tower, and then sort of take a almost right hand turn and start wandering north northwest. So the, you head for yeah east. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you head for a uh, another three or four hours. Um, the journey being fairly uneventful, but the weather is quite enjoyable. Um, but you begin to hear the baying of a horse just over the hill. Uh, as oh, actually, I need you. All. Hang on. Uh, where are you? All? You all over there. Where have you gone? There you are. Du, 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 du. Uh, as you as you move closer to the top of the hill, you begin to hear a woman's voice yelling incoherently. Uh, then the voices of two men can be heard. You crest the hill, and uh, 
and uh, you're not there. You're not there. You're there. <laughs> Ignore everything you just saw. Uh, and uh, you uh, you crest the hill and see a woman on horseback pulling a small cart full of apples. A burly man on horseback blocks the woman's path and holds her horse at bay. Another man has dismounted and is taking apples from the woman's cart and stuffing his saddlebags. Hmm. All right. Um... I fire arrows. I'll, yeah. I'll shout out, Oi, what's going on here? To firing the arrows. <laughs> are you are you firing an arrow, Alex? Yes, I am. Very attacky mood today. All right, cool. Uh, okay, so... Um... Now, hang on, because I'm going to go and use my <laughs> sharpshooter feet on that one. Okay. That down to twenty. Do I make it? Uh probably. <laughs> uh, yes. Twenty-two damage. Uh, Twenty-two damage. Which yeah. one were you firing at? The the one taking the apples from the car. <laughs> All right. So as Graven as Graven shouts, "Hello, what's going on here?" Bron just whips out his arrow and. Puts one straight in between the, the guy who's <laughs> taking the arrows straight through the eyes and kills him where he stands. All right. <laughs> um, Ouch. Seeing this, Rogar's going to whip out both his swords and uh, run forwards towards the cart. Okay. Uh, at which point, uh, the uh, the um, the 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 one on horseback turns. And starts to flee. Uh, uh, and I'll follow that up with my second one, if that's okay. <laughs> uh, sure. That uh, nah. Uh, that hits. All right, and does seven damage. Uh, and then, just for fairness, for fairness' sake, Graven and Rogar, <laughs> you can have a turn. Um. Well, seeing as we're Killing them, I will. Uh, I'll fire my arrows as well at that okay. one who's trying to escape. So that's a miss for sure. I would imagine. Uh, yeah. uh, I'll get two shots though. Ah. In All rubbish. right. So, um, Rogar, do you want to do anything? Uh, well, he's going to run forward, but will he catch him? Not quite. Uh, nope. nope. Not quite. At uh, which point he gallops off into the uh, into the away down the road, um, probably too far out of range at this point, and disappears. It's not exactly fair because I've got a pretty good range. Yeah, but he's like gone over the hill and disappeared. You don't need to. Mm. Go. Don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um. And civilians. So, uh, Rogar's going to ask this woman and say, are, are you okay? She says, oh, yes. Oh, oh, thank you. These men were for stealing my arrow, stealing my apples. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hmm. uh, can I check the body of this guy who's got the arrow sticking out his head? Uh, you can do, yeah. Anything on him? Any, uh... Um, so aside from their normal gear, uh, he has a coin purse on him, <laughs> which has three gold pieces, five silver pieces, and 25 copper pieces. Anything else on him that, like, um, identify him? Or, you know, um, is he carrying anything? Any papers? Um, or uh, Not particularly, no. He does seem... They seem to be, um, obviously, working together. Um, right. But they, he doesn't carry any like, noticeable emblems or anything like that. He's just okay. general banditry type gear. Human? <gasps> uh, yep, yeah, he is human. Okay. Um... <laughs> so as you like, just jump on the back of the horse and shout dibs, it goes, I'll <laughs> throw you off its back and you go clanging down onto your butt <laughs> and take. <laughs> Bloody horses. Take three bludgeoning damage as you land on your big fast. And then the... Uh, uh, I'm not even mad. That was hilarious. And then the horse sort of like... And like gallops off across across the hill. In the sort of certain direction is the other is the other guy. 
I hit? Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you mean motherfucker. See of a horse. All right, so you... you Is it nay good? Fine, at it twice. <laughs> nay good. You hit it twice, yeah. And What's, you what? killed it. Yes, dinner for us. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't Me have it, no one can. <laughs> no survivors. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a very no survivors kind of mood, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Full murder hobo today. Full murder hobo. Um, so, uh, Ro Rogar turns back to the woman and says, uh, I apologise for my friend. <laughs> And uh, where, where were you heading today? Oh, well, I was, uh, you know, just out doing my rounds. <laughs> so, oh, well, we've heard uh, there were bandits up ahead with a uh, toll, toll road, so it may not be safe to head that way. Oh, oh, no. Oh, OK. I was uh, heading to Bastion Bay, but I think I might have been lost anyway. <laughs> hmm. I'll, uh, I'll, uh... I'll, I'll, I'll turn around and head, head back in the other direction then. Ah, thank you. Can I do an insight check, see if I think she's lying? Uh, yep, yeah, sure. Don't be scared as shit. Um, so she seems to be telling the truth. You get the impression that she's a fairly, uh, you know, just a kind of a tradery type person doing the rounds. Okay. She's got some apples. She doesn't seem to be a wicked witch or anything. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay. Uh, I will tell her to um, travel safely then, if she's heading back. Yes, yes, Anna. Uh, you too. Uh, although you can uh, suddenly handle yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Strange woman. Before she leaves, uh, can we just I get... I her with my bow. <laughs> <Can> <laughs> I, just... I was about to say, if he goes for his bow, Rogar's just going to slap him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just going to jump on him. A consensus about giving two of the gold pieces to her as like a take this and be safe sort of thing. We don't uh, want to like get the rep of being absolute murder hobos. Well, I'm just well, after the guy that a horse shot a and horse. the guy. <laughs> but we're trying to rob her, to be fair. Yes. Um, yeah, if you like. That. So we slip her the two gold. Oh, oh, no, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, uh, I couldn't, really. Yeah, you keep your gold, thank you, though. I look at her stone dead in the eye and say, we didn't have it two minutes ago, so please, it means nothing to us. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, but... And she sort of hops off her horse and goes to the back of her cart and pulls out, like, a massive satchel of apples. She says, here, take take these, take these. You must, must, for your for the gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hang on, what's that, Graham? There's a Horton cast going free. <laughs> no, just, just, just the apples. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, we'll take Kill her and take her horse and car. <laughs> well, she's off the horse now, we could just get on it, but no. <laughs> uh, we, we take the apples and we say thank you very much and go about your way. Yes, yes, okay, thank you, thank you. And she, she jumps back on her horse and, and okay. rides off slowly. Uh, uh, Do you uh, think we should hide these? Uh, at this point, this you, dead horse and this dead guy. You, you see Rogar just pick up an apple and put the whole thing in his mouth and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> You hear from the corner. Hell, does that work? He ate an apple. Pick or like a duck? Does he chew or does it just go down? No, he like just crunches it down. He's Rogar. He's a crunchy man. He's a crunchy man. He's a crunchy man. He's half dragon. Mmm, delicious. Oh, actually, that's a good idea. Rogar, uh, you see this yes. body in front of us? Yes. Defiable at the minute. Can we please burn the evidence? Uh, I suppose so. <laughs> Do we want to get the flames as well? <laughs> get the flame effect ready. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Are you? Hang do on. you have the ability to to burn people alive? Hang on. Well, he's or not alive. I stand, I stand <laughs> expectantly. Maybe I'm going to stand back, <laughs> just in case. All right. So yeah, you sort of you pile them up. Um, you probably pile them up together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you uh, you move them off the track because you're not stupid. Uh, and uh, Rogar walks up to him and goes, 
<laughs> sets them alight, and they're now on fire and burning. And you can smell the smell of pork in the air. Mm. Mm. Tasty, Dave. Rogar li licks his lip and lips and then has another apple. <laughs> <laughs> For Rogar, is it? Because he's not a human. This is good to, good to fight off the scurvy. There is no scurvy because you're not on a fucking boat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so can we see anything else from here, further up the road? Um, so the path sort of continues onwards. Uh, you're kind of walking um, through kind of hilly, plainy, foresty type area. Okay. Uh, but you can't see anything. The, the path just sort of carries on. And you reckon you've probably walked for a good six or seven hours by now. Mm-hmm. Do you right. uh, carry on towards where you're heading? Um, we well, said that the uh, guy on the horse ran over the crest of a hill, so if we make it to the top of the hill, can we see further? Uh, yeah, see what's you can. Ahead? As soon as you get to the top of the hill, uh, you kind of look over the hill, um, and it sort of leads down into a, it's kind of a foresty area. Um, the path kind of leads into the forest, and uh, you can't see any sign of a guy on horseback. Okay. He seems to have probably disappeared into the forest. Um, he didn't seem to be sticking around as soon as you killed his uh, killed his ally. He seemed to be mm. pretty long gone. All right. Um, should we head into the forest then? Yeah, I guess so. Carry on yeah. towards wherever the bandits are. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you had you start walking for another uh, 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 for for another kind of six or seven hours. Um, and after not too long, you find it starts to uh, it's starting to get quite dark. Um, you start wondering whether it's time to set up camp for the night. Hmm. Or you can continue walking through the night. It's up to you. Uh, what's everyone's consensus? Should we just set up camp uh, on? You yeah. come to you come to a kind of uh, a clearing in the forest where you know it wouldn't be too difficult to. Uh, Set up a fairly protected camp and keep watch and not get right. attacked on too easily. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you uh, you set up camp and it gets uh, starts to get dark. Uh, so you need to uh, to light something. Yeah, let's make, light the make a small. Let's make a small fire. Oh, it's dark. <sighs> It didn't just do that like a binary transition. No, it does. That's how the sun works in D and D. <laughs> However, you were obviously prepared and lit a fire, which I will bring to you almost immediately. If I can find a fire asset. Ooh, this one. Ah, uh, that's. So we, we can do like a long rest overnight and have someone uh, watching out while uh... Yeah. So uh, who has dark vision? Uh, nope. No one. Oh dear. It's fine, we've got a fire to see by. A fire to illuminate exactly where we are. <laughs> Unless there's any crazy people whipping their bows out and shooting everyone. Again, how did I deal with that situation badly? <laughs> So you've sort of set up camp and you've had a conversation about the day, fairly uneventful day that you've had so far, except, you know, you do hang up a bit on these bandits. Uh, Rogar, roll a perception check. Uh, Shouldn't that be Andy? Because he's, like, super perceptive and he can't be surprised. <laughs> All right, so the uh, the night is very pleasant. A, uh, a cool breeze is rustling through the tree tree limbs as you sit next to the campfire recounting the encounter recounting the encounter with the bandits and deciding who will stand watch for the evening. Uh, as the breeze dies down and the sounds of the night hush for a moment you see an orange glow further down the road in fact, back where you came from in that direction I'm aware you might not be able to see the end of that arrow <laughs> uh, Voices can now be heard coming from that direction The voices uh. are soft but you're able to make out the following. I see we kill them while they're sleeping. But I need to rest uh, to, uh, to recover my spells. We don't need your spells. I'll slice them up real easy like. 
Oh, Giles, please don't be hasty. We need to prepare. Yes, Giles, we must wait until dawn. And the breeze picks mm. up again, and the sounds of night returns. So mm, I, I this... assume that was Rogel that heard that. Uh, well, you've also heard that, really. Okay, so we'll just, just, just we'll look about, around just to the other three. two and say, uh, were they talking about us? <laughs> Do you think there are other people that have killed their men along this route tonight? Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, they, you said they were, there was an orange light. Uh, yeah, that's right. Just uh, back down the path to the left. Okay, is it coming towards us or? Um, no, it seems to be fairly stationary. Hmm. Well, we could so leave yes. this leave this fire here, just burning, so it looks like we're still here, and sneak down there and see what's going on. Yeah. Just throw, throwing this one out there. If the guy says that he needs to wait for his spells to recoup, who's hmm. to say? This isn't an illusion to drag us into a trap. Mm. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Might yeah. be giving Graham a bit of credit. <laughs> but <laughs> if, he, if he needs to recover his spells, then oh, yeah, better he, to attack them now than now. when he's recovered. <laughs> Did the, word, the woman's voice sound familiar? Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't the woman that you It wasn't, it wasn't the one we read. the apples, no. No. Okay. Fuck okay, it, let's rock. Let's do this. But none of us can see in the dark, so that's probably a bad thing. Yeah, but we can see their orange light, can't we? That's right, yeah. So yeah, we leave our campfire here, and so they think we're sneak, still there. Sneak over to them towards their we'll light. Sneak through in the darkness, but we can see their light, but they won't be able to see us unless they've got dark vision. So we just head towards the light till we can see them. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Unless they've got exactly the same idea and they're not by their campfire or whatever the <gasps> light is. Um, but we we go and take a look, can't we? Have we been sat around long enough for it to be counted as a short rest? Uh, well, you haven't. No, you haven't really got to that point yet. You've kind of just been sorting your campfire out and okay. um, setting up and deciding who's going to keep watch that kind of thing. Fair enough. For Mike. So you want to head stealthily back down the the road to to the uh, the people? Is that right? Yes, yeah. please. Okay, so if I put you. Oh, you'll be on the right-hand side of this map. Ah, that's perfect. <laughs> Couldn't be any more perfect. Uh, where's Rogar? Rogar, can you see yourself? Mm, uh, let me zoom out a second. No. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Oh, I know why. Because <laughs> uh, you need that button, I think. Uh, now? Yeah, and I can also see... A wagon that's lit up down the road. What? Can you? Are you sure you can't see? No, I can see myself, and I can see oh, right. a wagon yeah, yeah. lit up down the road. Great. Uh, yeah. So as you head back down the path a bit, you can just about make out the faint glow of what seems to be a campfire, and you can see the back end of a of a wagon that's parked there. I get my bow ready. Uh, yeah, I get my swords out. <laughs> uh, I get my bow ready. Okay, are you going to head down the path then? Yep. All yeah. right, so you um sneaky sneaky. You just about make out in the in the moonlight the uh, the path by your feet. I Ooh. can't see shit. Rogar walked it perfectly, so follow him. <laughs> I can't see the others tokens. In fact, I'm just going to give you a uh, just going to give you all uh, one, one of these. Ah, nice. Oh, you give me easier. Oh, that's better. Then to sell up in this bitch. Look at that dynamic light. It's beautiful. All right. So as you approach, uh, I'd like you to roll a stealth check. I did one earlier. <laughs> oh yeah. Eighteen. All right, okay. That's not bad. Pretty stealthy. Uh, so as you uh, as you uh, get closer to the campsite, you can hear 
You hear another, you hear, My bleeds will find your mark this evening. Of this, I am certain. Uh, but a covered wagon is sort of blocking the view of the uh, the campfire and the men. Uh, the wagons, yeah. Uh. So could we sneak up behind the wagon? Yeah, that's what I'm Just up along here. Okay. Let's try and sneak up behind the wagon then. And... <clears throat> Uh, okay, so if you're going to walk directly up to the wagon, I need to roll another stealth check. Another one? Yep. Didn't we just do one? No. Nope. <laughs> sure we did, you know. We just did a stealth check. <laughs> yeah, but that was for earlier. This is for now. It's not winning. Well, I've not become un stealth between no, but you're doing now. different things now. I, I've become oh, even more yeah. stealthy. <laughs> I'm... Uh, is free. All right, so Graven and Rogar, you pull yourselves up to uh, behind the uh, behind the cart. And what are you up to? Uh, is Bron coming? I think he said he was hiding behind the tree. Okay. Well, I guess once we're here, we're gonna step out and attack him. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, maybe I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> or are we gonna listen and see if we can catch more of their okay, conversation? Okay, yeah, let, let's listen for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Graham. Hello. Um, I know the way that you've done the dynamic lighting, but it's slightly wrong. What I'd like to do is skulk around 30 foot round to this bit, but I can't see the... Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> You're just on, just on the other side of the dynamic lighting drawing i'd like to be a bit further into the tree cover yep, but yep, no worries that's fine we'll presume you're as far in the trees as you want to be it's all right. forest thank you uh okay so as uh graven and rogar you sit and listen and you hear you hear the men uh talking more about uh almost seems, seems to sound like a great battle that they've had uh or are about to about to go into uh roll a uh perception check Uh, and Alex, you uh, you you've walked around, so you can see the campsite now. Uh, so you can see that there are four men sitting around the campfire. Uh, you can see a short, stocky man with a bit of a whisker scruff, uh, and you can just about make out. Uh, no, you can't make out through the trees. Uh, you see a slender man with short, trim back hair, wearing sort of brown robes. Uh, you can see a fairly athletic-looking man wearing chainmail armor and carrying a carrying a big old hammer. And you can see a fairly burly man with a trim brown beard. Uh, Graven and Rogar, you've kind of had a little tiny peek around the wagon, and you've sort of seen that as well. Um, and you hear them, you hear them kind of discussing a, a, a great battle that they've had. Um, roll a, oh, you rolled a perception check. Great job. Uh, okay. Yeah, all right. That's about all you know so far. Um. Okay. Um. So, uh, Ro Rogar is going to whisper to Graven, what shall we do? Shall we confront them? <laughs> Um, do from <laughs> listening to their conversation, does it sound as though they were talking about us? Uh, roll an insight check. Uh, so you don't get the impression that they were talking about us. They haven't. They don't seem to be uh, specifically uh, angry at anyone. They seem to be, you know, uh, talking about something though. Hmm. I think we should just see how this plays uh, Alex, out. you can't talk to them because you're in the woods. <laughs> Alex, um, you, you, however, notice, uh, and just for completeness sake, because, uh, you know, you guys wouldn't have seen this. Is, from, is that one of the... Check uh, this card. You 
put it in DM announcements? No, I put it in our personal chat to Alex. Uh oh. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, I've got another question. No. <laughs> okay, then I. They look like the kind. They look like the horses that would pull the cart. Oh. Um, this covered wagon. How heavy does it look? Uh, it looks, you know, fairly heavy. Covered wagons are not the lightest of uh, implements. Is it the kind of thing that uh, Rogar and Graven could possibly push over if they wanted to? Ah, uh, you could probably push it over. Yeah, from you know, by uh, like pushing it from getting a bit of leverage on it. Sure. It wouldn't be the easiest thing to do, but you can certainly try. So I I think we should try... One of us should... Oh, I'm going to whisper this to Graven. One of us should confront them, uh, and the, the other two back them up if it goes wrong. Right. <clears throat> All right, we could do that if you like. So uh, Rogar, Rogar's going to step around the cart... <laughs> All right. And, uh, I was going to volunteer, but carry on. Because <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big, scary-looking dragonborn. <laughs> True. So he's going to step around the car, and he's going to say, "What is your business here?" Oh, you faded out, then. Uh, what is your business here? And then they all sort of like snap and turn around and go, oh, "What? Who are you?" He says, <clears throat> "My name is Rogar, and we're out hunting bandits. What is your business here?" Oh, can you hear me? Well, he's not going to say he's a bandit, is he? <laughs> he might. <laughs> We're out hunting carpenters. You wouldn't be carpenters, would you? I think Graham's, yeah, lost his mic. Cause... <laughs> oh. Mic check, mic check. I'll be back in like three minutes. So Rog Rogar <laughs> just stands there for three whole minutes. <laughs> <laughs> waiting <laughs> for a response. <laughs> Man, the lag on this world is really bad. <laughs> I'm going to use this interruption to get another beer. Mm. Yeah. I'll be back, okay? If I'm not back in two, three minutes, it's all gone terribly wrong. Well, I'm not going anywhere because my wireless headset's amazing. All right. I can't see any of the, uh, the roll times, but we could have got my PC with sorting this life out. Hello. Sorry, what was that? Hello. Oh. Hello. I said we can do this while my PC saw and its life out. It's fine. Um, okay. The uh, as you uh, as you run out and said what you said, I don't know if you heard what I said. I said. I, I didn't hear. <laughs> I will turn to you. Oh, 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 what, what, what are you? What are you doing here? I just said what I was doing here. I, I my name is Rogar, and we're we're out hunting uh, bandits. What are you doing here? Uh, uh, well, uh, we are travelling suckers, of course. Can't you see from the sign? And he points at the uh, points at the, uh, the, the 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 cart, and uh, you see on the side of the cart it says uh, it, it says Smith Entertainment Co. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we, are, we are entertainers, and we are rehearsing our lines for our performance tomorrow. <laughs> we are we are to this... perform. Can we do an insight check on that? Yeah, I was going to say, that sounds... <laughs> Graham, does this sound like the um, the circus that um, came and spoke to Graven ages ago? Uh, no, a different circus. Different circus, okay, <laughs> cool. These seem like more like your, your bardic type crew. That one was just creepy. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so... Um, I'm missing your insight roll. Ro Rogar's going to say then, can I have a look in your wagon and uh, look at your uh, acting supplies? <laughs> he says, what, 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 do you just walk around forests and start raiding people's caravans? Of course not, of course not, go, go away, go away. And um, uh, Bron, you get the impression, you've sort of walked in a bit from the forest now, you get the impression that they, they certainly seem to be, um, uh, you know, the, the kind of acting types. Uh, in fact, the one that's talking to, uh, to Rogar now uh, it has kind of dropped. Uh, it seems to be talking quite posh. 
Um, and you don't hear any of like the scratchy, uh, scary type voice that you heard before. Hmm. I, I stay in the trees and watch silently. Um, okay, so I'm going to roll uh, intimidation. Okay. And I'm, and I'm just going to kind of uh, <clears throat> explain again that we're we're hunting bandits and we need to make sure that you are who you say you are. L listen, listen, listen here. My name, my name, my name is uh, my name is uh, Alexander. Chicka chicka slim shady. <laughs> Alexander Lansfellow. And uh, I am I am uh, very new to this profession, but I'm traveling with my friends here, and we are from the Smiths Entertainment Company, and we are going to the bandit campment up the road to see Charles Nelville to perform this new performance that we have been working on for the last month. And quite frankly, I don't need you coming around here and putting all this pressure on me when I've already got enough pressure. Uh, he's going to go see the bandit leader. That's who we want to see. <laughs> uh, so are you still behind the wagon, Graven? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to step out if there's any trouble, though. Um, I think you should step out and intimidate him a little. Mind you, well, you can't hear anything I'm saying. No, well, I'm just thinking, we, if we can kind of get on their good side, maybe we can pose as part of the performing troupe when they go to see the bandits, and then we'll have the element of surprise. At this point, the uh, the, uh, okay. the 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 person here sort of screams, goes, "Oh, she's good!" and turns around and runs into the woods, <laughs> almost directly into Brom. <laughs> no. Um, Why you you're not there? You've moved. Where are you? You there? Or she runs into the woods and like is hiding behind a tree. Okay. All right. But so Rog Rogor's gonna say the the bandits won't still be there when you get there if we have anything to say about it. I am. Hello. Uh, sneak and take her down and tie her up to a tree. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so as you as you walk up behind her, I'm like grab her. She goes, ah! okay, uh, but doesn't put on any. But she doesn't put on any like defense or anything. And you she, she like you put a put a hand around her mouth and and tie her up and tie her to a tree. Uh, she doesn't. She just seems to be quite scared. Uh, would be. What, what did you say, Rogar? Uh, um, I, I told them that the bandits wouldn't still be there when, when they get there, right. if we have anything to say about it. She says, well, uh, well, we've been hired and we have the uh, contract and we, we, we have to go and perform. So we'll be going there tomorrow either way. Uh, and if you want to, uh, well, you do whatever you want to do in the meantime. But uh, we'll be turning up tomorrow and we'll be doing this performance because we've been promised that we will get a, uh, we'll be performing for Charles Neville. And if we do it well, then we're going to have a, uh, a nice private meeting with him. And it's all going to be good. Uh, why, why do you want a private meeting with a bandit? Well, I, I, he's got to pay us, you know. We're, we're not free. We're, we are the Smith Entertainment Co. <laughs> we are. We only do this work for for money, of course. And he will uh, undoubtedly want to pay us out of the way of all the uh, the proles. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> um, See, what we could do is just tie them all up, and then head off to the bandit thing, saying we're the Smith. Uh, performance company, <laughs> and the, the mage hearing you say that just wets himself. <laughs> guy, you see a, a like pile of water start kind of puddling around him. So is, is, is this here. one the mage? Hey, uh, yeah. hey, hey, Graham, does he run towards the forest? No, no he's just <laughs> just start like sh shivering and was wet. Yeah, himself. I will step out. Uh, so calm, you know I'm there now. Calm <laughs> down, Sam Fisher. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. And the, uh, the as you as you step out, Graven, this guy, he, he looks at you and he goes, ah! and just faints. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, Alexander sort of looks around and says, "Oh, oh excuse me, they are, uh, we know we're not uh, the wild folks like you. <laughs> uh, please don't rob us, <laughs> please. Uh, we are uh, we don't have anything of value. Just our performances. Film and media students." <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, okay, so... Okay, R- Rogar's going to walk over to, to Graven and just uh, uh, say, uh, well, what, what shall we do? Um, so is, this guy's out cold now, is he? Yeah, he's fainted. fainted. This guy's this wetting person. himself, literally. Right. This, this person's that guy's tied to a tree. Tied to a tree. Yeah. And this one, this is the he's, bullshit he's one. The one he's, like, he's not bullshit. Yeah, he's sort of come across as bullshit, but in an acting kind of sense. Right. Um, you definitely don't get the impression that if challenged, he would per- persist. <laughs> okay, so I think, what what do we want from these people then? That's the question, isn't it? Oh. <clears throat> They're going to the same place as us, so. And they're being, they're expected, so they can just walk right in there. You see. So if yes, we of to... course we're expected. We have a contract. Shut <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking. Uh, so we can. We can. Um, I'm going to risk whisper this to Rogar because otherwise they're just going to freak out. We could tie them up, leave them here, take their stuff. Pretend to be them, so when we get to the bandit camp, we can just drive right in, set up on stage or whatever they do, poison them, and then we've got the element of surprise. We might not even have to do anything. We could sneak around, maybe once we're in the camp. Uh, <coughs> just leave these guys here for a bit, tie uh, them up, tie the trees in here. I guarantee they will uh, be dead. Uh, so- excuse me, I could uh, I could show you my uh, our contract. Yeah, give us the contract. Let's have a look. <laughs> and he's sort of, he reaches inside his uh, inside his inside the, uh, the, the the covered wagon, and uh, reaches in and uh, pulls out. You will have to look in Discord. Drag and drop. Why won't you drag and drop? What's the drag and drop? Is it like drag a wrestling move drop. done by Rhaegar? <laughs> it's his finisher. <laughs> Phrasing. There you go. In the Where is uh, uh, in in the channel, there is a contract which you can read. Printable. You just copy this off from Think Engineer. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, oh, I've opened it in Firefox, so it wouldn't be in the recording. Smith Entertainment Co. contracts with Brill, whoever that is. <laughs> Brill Cream. Day celebration. Ten uh, percent deposit required. Little, little pieces. Hmm. <clears throat> ah. So what they were talking about could have been their uh, their play they're doing. So Rogar Rog- turns back to the guy and says, "What is your play?" Ah, uh, it's 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 one of uh, uh, Giles's, uh, Mr. Neville's, Mr. Neville's uh, great victories. Uh, the the Night of the Rise is called. Uh, uh, here I have the I have the script. I have the script. And he and he leans into his back into the uh, the wagon and pulls out pulls out the script, and uh, hands it to you. All right, let's script. have that as well. He says, this is this is the play that we will will be doing the four of us to, to, tomorrow. Well, I hope I don't know where is uh where is uh where is uh where is uh where is Betum? Where is she gone? I, th- I thought it was the four of us. Uh, mm. I hope we're still alive. Mm. Rogar turns back to Graven and says, uh, I don't think I could remember all these words. <laughs> uh, this is what we heard them rehearsing. <laughs> That's what that was about. All right, can we take the script with us then? Sure. I mean, sure. Uh, so, <clears throat> so Ro- Rogar's going to... Uh, <laughs> Whisper to Graven, um, perhaps we could use them to help us sneak into the bandit camp. Uh, yeah, but how can we trust them not to give us away? Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Tongues. Tongues. <laughs> God damn so it. So now, you, now, you've, now you've kind of received their script and their contract. As you look at them in, in a little more detail, you notice that the... Uh, 
the 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 whilst they are you know, quite obviously fighters and mages and clerics, they are also wearing outfits. Um, it's it's also going to stage props and stuff. Right. Uh, none of the weapons that they are holding look particularly of fine craftsmanship, and uh, they don't seem to be too comfortable in their outfits. Hmm. Okay. So the thing is, can we trust them or not? Because we can either say, okay, we're coming with you and uh, you do your play and we're just going to sneak in. Or, guys, have you actually read the damn play? Well, I read the first bit. Reading till the end, right? Okay, hang on then. Which bit in particular? <laughs> bit. I'm just thinking we could play this off as can we have a member of the audience and uh, <laughs> take the. Um... Have you read the Have you read the contract? Have you read the note at the bottom of the contract specifically? Just pointing out in case you haven't read it. What Very about getting a one to? Yeah, see, so we could perform this, and then. If we do it really well, we get a one to one chat with a man. Uh, we could perform it, or we could uh, let them perform it, and uh, while the play is going on, make our move. I was thinking, is we perform this, but we say, can we get uh, the the, um, the the Giles fellow to actually be in the show, and instead of pretending to stab and kill him, we stab and kill him. So it offers, yeah. he's such a good actor, isn't he? Look at him. And then we, we exit the stage left quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's what we should do. That okay. sounds like a great plan. <laughs> Nothing could, <laughs> possibly, could possibly go, go wrong. wrong. <laughs> no, I know, exactly. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> it, it's too crazy. It won't, it won't work. That'll be great. <laughs> Well, worst case scenario, we get found out and then we're just back to murder hobo like we would have been anyway. <laughs> In the woods, I haven't said any of this. <laughs> what? No metagaming here. Has Graham gone? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. I just have nothing, no need to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Because the plan's so stupid, he's not bothering entertaining it. It's a really short play. <laughs> Graham had a short attention span. Well, what are we going to do then? I think we should impersonate them. Uh, there's a third option which is we've got the girl tied up. Why don't we keep her as a hostage? One of you goes along and... Uh... I was wondering where you were going with that for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> and poison them or something. I don't know. Do you have any poison? I imagine ink's pretty poisonous. Don't no, waste the ink, though. We need that for tattoos. <laughs> um, well... See, so I'm all for tying them up and going along as them. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It'd be funny. We can take their costumes, can't we? Whether I think they're going to be eaten up. if we leave them Although, in the forest. Although, um, they might be slightly suspicious that one of us is a dragonborn. I don't know, a bit of, no, bit they, of stage they're... makeup. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're the, actors. The they other option, right. if we convince them to uh, let us accompany them, we could always be their... Uh, their That's true. Stage hands slash bodyguard. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's do that then. Let's so be. We'll, we'll make that offer to them. The, um, yeah, we're part of the uh, backstage crew. Well, I think you should tie them up yourself. <laughs> they might, you know, they might not make it. They might rat you out. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think this guy would, but I think. Sorry, that guy. But I think the rest of them are such babies that, yeah, they might. Yeah. Well, how? what are our chances of disguising that Rogar is a dragonborn? <laughs> I should have well, asked. Uh, roll a, roll a, uh, 
Roll. Has anybody got a disguise kit? Hang on. One of you roll a history check. All of you roll a history check. Thirteen. Okay, so uh, Graven and Bron, you you would probably know that uh, whilst Dragonborns are fairly uh, fairly rare in the in the the the, uh, the kind of main parts of the Forgotten Realms, out here in the wilds, Dragonborn are a little less uh, scared. People are a little, little less; they're a little less uncommon. Um, but they off, quite often take up roles where they play, you know, maybe the clown in acting groups or become distant, that sort of stuff. So it wouldn't be too un- uncommon for a dragonborn to, to join a uh, an acting group such as these fellows. All right. I reckon we should do the play ourselves and get, like you said, get Giles as the, as okay. the fourth person. So Rogar is just going to walk over to this guy, grab him and tie him up. Ah, please! Don't kill me! Ah, ah. And he just sort of like lets him tie him up, but he just goes limp. <laughs> a little too limp. You like you struggle to tie him up and you have to ask him to straighten up a bit. <laughs> what do these two think about this? Well, th- this guy's unconscious. This guy's and fainted. And this guy's pissed himself. He's literally standing in a pile of his own urine. Rogar, right. just, Rogar just hands him some rope and like, do it yourself. It's <laughs> 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 just sort of like unintelligible noises come out as he starts right. tying himself up. <laughs> well, nobody's going to get hurt as long as you do as you're told. Oh, I'll yeah. say that as intimidatingly as possible. Oh, yeah, yeah. and the, uh, the the main guy's tied up on the floor goes... <laughs> See, we get him to shit himself as well. That'd be great. <laughs> You notice his uh, previously quite white cleric robes. Uh, Men's robes are now uh, a little bit more brown. R- Rogar's going to um, just uh, have a look in the cart. Do we see like spare robes next to equipment? Yeah. Uh, all right, so as you look in the cart, you see... Uh, you find uh, four entertainers packs, a multicoloured jester's cap, various pots of makeup. A disguise kit, several different costumes, including four bandit costumes, and all of the costumes that you would need to uh, to do the play. All right, sweet. Oh, and also a small wooden chest that holds ten G gold pieces, ten silver pieces, and that was open, and you got the impression that's where he got the contract and the uh, the script out of. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um. So I, uh, I'm just going to shout, shout Bron and ask, fi- ask where he is. <laughs> I say nothing. <laughs> He's over there. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> President, I, I untied the, the civilian from the tree, keeping like her tethered, and we walk back towards the camp. Does he pants think about seeing this? Okay, so we're we're going to uh, fill Bron in on the the plan then, of, and I'm going to say there's all the costumes are in the wagon, so uh, we should be able to impersonate them. Bron is not sure about this. Have I disappeared again? No. Can okay, you? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not too sure about this being the best plan. What's your plan then? Graham, can you move the poor person tied up in the forest to the the circle? Um I do, but I'm I'm how, how many are there? This seems dangerous, and aren't these guys just going to get eaten if we leave them tied up in the forest? Nah, they'll be fine. I look, it's one thing getting bandits because they deserve it, but civilians, I don't want collateral damage on our conscience. Well, we'll come, we'll come straight back for them. They'll be fine. We'll leave them some food. <laughs> See, we we could untie them. We could untie them just before we leave, and uh, 
But obviously, if they come, if they come to the uh, bandit camp, then uh, well, they'll go the same way as the bandits. This is up to you guys. This is too morally questionable for Bron. <laughs> <laughs> morally uh, questionable Ron the, the guy who shot the guy it, let's just kill him between the eyes without <laughs> blinking well hang on Ron there, you, would pro- you would know that there is a fire burning as well and generally fires keep away the, the nastier of creatures whilst it's burning and it's going to be day fairly soon yeah it'd be alright <clears throat> we could uh, even if you're feeling really guilty Bron we could even bring them back the gold that they were promised if we find it like a good idea let's do this shit <laughs> so looking at this play right at the end like you said giles kills the other bandit <clears throat> doesn't he? so we need the real giles to be the bandit leader we'll the other guy. so then we can kill him but we kill him for real and we say what a good actor he is does that make sense um, so hang on, we're on page two. Are we going to get Giles to play Giles or Giles to play the? No, man? one of us needs to play Giles because Giles kills the guy at the end. Okay, but um, who's the bandit leader then? Um, it's just a character called Leader. He doesn't actually have any speaking lines, though, does he? He doesn't. If well, he's got no speaking lines. I'm just wondering, if he's the one that uh, did this, then he might not fancy playing the guy that he killed. <laughs> uh, okay. But then, if he does play Giles, then we have to kill him before he actually slits one of our throats at the end here. Well, we'll give him a fake sword. Uh, I, I suppose he could play the guy that gets killed, because we'll say that he doesn't have to say anything, but there's still only... Three of us, not four of us. To take one of the actors along. No, we can't trust them. We just get Giles to play. Maybe Giles plays Giles then. Or, but we switch it at the end and we kill him. I go, ha ha. <laughs> yeah, could do. Or I'd, if we've got a, what is it, a jester's, jester's hat and some makeup, one of us could play two characters and just turn side to side as they do different lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are we gonna how are we gonna get it to work so that we kill the leader? Well yeah, we could we could ask the real Giles to be the bandit leader since he doesn't have to say anything. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we run him through with a sword. He's a fan of the theatre and stuff, so I can He is a fan that. of the theatre, so if he'd be delighted to play a part, wouldn't he, really? Is that think? code for he's going to be really camp? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we, we get him to be the leader. So then he's the fighter then, because lead fighter assumes the role of leader in the script here. So one of us needs to play mage, one of us needs to play Giles, and one of us needs to play cleric. Wait, hang on, are you saying that leader and uh, fighter are the same person? Yeah, because it says on page two, fighter assumes the role of the leader. Ah, I see, okay. So that's what we need to do then. So the real Giles is going to be the fighter? Yeah. Okay. Although, that's going to be weird though, he's going to want to be Giles, isn't he? We could... Seeing as he's Giles... I, I think we can convince him that he should just be the leader. Um, he's he's paid us to come and act, so we should do the acting, and he can just stand there and be the leader. And uh, all, all, right. all he has to do is a convincing death. Okay, let's do that then. Good idea. Okay, so who out of us is going to have what role? Someone needs to be Giles. Okay, I'll be cleric. I don't mean I'll be Giles if you like. I uh, I can be the fighter. 
I thought Giles, real Giles, was going to be the fighter. But I d it just says that the fighter becomes the leader, but I don't think they're actually the same character, are they? No. Well, that's true. We could just have him step in as the leader when we it gets to that yeah, bit. Yeah, we, we just say we, we need you to... When, after Giles says to the audience, my blades will find the mark of this evening, of that I'm certain, then uh, the real Giles walks onto stage as the leader. <clears throat> okay, so we need four of us then, don't we? Because there's four people. Plus the narrator. Let's fight a mage, cleric and Giles. Um... Because the mage becomes narrator. Does anyone want to go uh, full on Gollum and uh, do do two roles? <laughs> uh... Dress someone up half in one costume, half in the other, and. Uh... Um, yeah, I don't know. Or maybe we should just get Giles to play one of the characters. So maybe Giles just plays Giles, and then when it gets to the bit where Giles normally would kill the leader, we will just jump on him and kick the shit out of him. Um... Which probably won't go too, down too well with the rest of the bandits. That's the only thing. Yeah, well, that's why I was thinking. If he's, uh, if he's playing the leader, then when we stab him, they might think it's all part of the act. But I think eventually, okay. eventually they're going to realise that we've actually killed him, probably before we get out of there. All so. right, I've got it. So for the first bit of the play, Giles could play one of the other characters. And then when it gets to the bit where, in the script, it says, fighter assumes the role of the leader, whichever one... Is Giles is playing? He he does the part of leader. Yeah. Okay. So there is there is a bit where it says at the bottom of page one, cast members now bandits come back to stage. So we have to do a costume change. So at that point, yeah, he could become the leader. Yeah. Okay. And the rest of us are all as bandits. Yes, I guess so. Except the person who's Giles. Is Giles not disguised as a bandit as well? I think he's disguised, disguised as a bandit as well, isn't he? Because mm. then he does the big reveal at the end that says, that man is me, the great Giles Neville. So he could be disguised, he could be a, dressed as a bandit as well, in disguise. So we all dressed as bandits then. I believe so. Let's do that then. Yes. Does that sound like a plan? I think that's that that would work, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm just reading through the script again. Right. You guys, if you feel free to have a little practice of the script as well. I find it help you when you get to the main <clears throat> performance. Yeah, I think we should. All right then. What do the tied up actors think as we're doing this run through? I mean, they're basically all just still wetting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they're not the most bravest of actors. At this point, you hear the crowd's applause. If they don't, you better run. <laughs> so, 
See, the leader doesn't actually say anything. So what we could do, we could do it as audience participation. Where, because when he sneaks back into the bandits' camp, obviously we're in a bandits' camp, so we can move amongst the other bandits. And then when he moves up to the leader and stabs him, we could move up to the leader and stab him. So, how? So how about okay? Uh, Graven can be Giles. All and right. Then uh, Rogar can be the fighter. And then if... Hmm. Maybe we should just do it as writ and then just do it later when we see him one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, but there's still not enough of us. That's the only problem. I have to take one of these two mugs along. <clears throat> yeah, but how do we know they're not going to give the game away? <laughs> well... We don't, but... Uh, Damn it, why don't we, need, we, just, we needed I, four people for this game. <laughs> why don't we just drop doing all of this bullshit, and we take the horse and cart, we go up to the gate, and we just attack them that way? Because uh, I think it'd be way cooler to attack them after the play. <laughs> it's more risky. <laughs> I think we should at least go up there and pretend to be actors so we can scout it out before we uh, go full murder hobo. Yeah. See, we do need four of us, don't we? That's the problem. We could. So, th the only one that didn't sound like a complete wimp was this guy. So we could ask him to to continue the role as Giles. Plus, he already he knows the story, so he could potentially talk us past the gate and he is an actor so he might be yeah. fairly convincing so okay I'll, I'll ask I'll, I don't know if we've got something covering his mouth but I'll ask him if we uh, leave your friends unharmed would you be willing to take us with you as your actors Graham, this is the point where you respond. Is he there? He's there. Yeah, okay, so I take the thing out of his mouth. <laughs> uh, and he starts to oh, I, I couldn't leave my, uh, I couldn't leave my compadres. We are, we are a merry band of uh, uh, entertainers. I, would, I wouldn't want to leave them here on, on their own. Oh. <clears throat> Alright, okay, so three of us go, right? Bron says, I'm going to go to the forest. I'm going to take a piss. If this isn't sorted by the time we get back, <laughs> I don't know what I'll do, but I won't be happy. Right. Looking at the play. Oh, I'm walking off and getting a drink. Right back. <laughs> so the play's split into two bits, right? Yeah. So the first bit, we get the real Giles to play a part as well, because he's into theatrics, right? So or, there's three of us. Or they could, they could all do their real part, and then in the second part, where there's bandits, we come on stage as bandits. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, we don't want to give the game away, do we? Better off as we did it. Mm. Well, but it doesn't sound like he's going to go for it, just one of us going. Yeah, I'm just a bit worried that if we go along with these guys, they're going to just turn us in as soon as we get there. Okay, well, yeah, I, I, I think possibly the guy, who, the, the leader guy might be okay, but the rest of them won't be. But I, I don't know, I reckon we could get away with doing the play. Yeah. Um... So should we just leave them all here and just go and we'll... Yeah. We'll wait we'll rope, in, we'll rope in Giles for the fourth person. Well, he said he doesn't want to leave his people here, so... No, no, Giles, the oh, bandit. Oh, the real Giles, Giles, okay. The real Giles. So we'll tell him, hey, you can play a part as well because we know you like acting. Okay. We'll say that, that uh, one of our... Uh, one of our actors uh, 
was taken ill and couldn't make it. Yeah. So for the first part, he can play any of those characters. It doesn't matter. For the second part of the play, we need him well, to play the leader the because he's the one who gets stabbed. Yeah, so he could be the fighter because he has one line and then he, the fighter becomes the leader anyway, doesn't he? <clears throat> and then... Yeah. So Graven can be Giles. Uh, Bronze said he'd be the cleric and I'll be the mage. <laughs> slash narrator. Okay. Sounds like a plan, so leave him here, fuck him. Well, don't fuck him, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, take the horses and the wagon with us and uh, go to the bandit yeah. camp. I mean, I think we, right. should, we should have a nap here first, though. Wait till... Yeah, morning. okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're going to wait till morning now, then. All right. Okay, so you've had... <laughs> are you going to have a practice through the script, or are you not going to bother... Uh, oh, yeah, I guess we'll have to wait for Alex to get back then. Or should we do it tomorrow morning before we set off? Right, let's assume you're having the rest while he uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to go for Actually, a week. Just, uh, I'm going to get a drink a minute. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So are we good? What are we doing? Bro. What are we doing, guys? Uh, getting a drink. That's what we're doing. And but we're gonna do. We're gonna do the play. What could possibly go wrong? I know exactly. How could it fail? So I think we get Giles is gonna be the fighter and then the leader. I'm gonna be the mage and then the narrator. Um, Graven's going to play the, the the Giles in the play and you're going to be the cleric <clears throat> sound good? what if he doesn't buy it at all and he's just like I'm not doing that stupid shit well then we'll have to kill him <laughs> but I, I think he will I think he'll go for it he'll go for it when he's a he likes a he likes the theatrical stuff it's a pretty big assumption well, I mean, not that I want to metagame or anything, but I don't think the DM would have gone to the trouble of uh, finding a play for us to do if we weren't going to actually do it. <laughs> he does rather enjoy the theatre. Yeah, it does say the guy enjoys the theatre, so yeah, I reckon we'll get away with it. it. Either way, it'll be hilarious, and worst case, we just go back to killing them like we would have done anyway, so... Yeah. Who's Brill Havacross? Havacross, by the way. Uh, maybe, maybe we should maybe. ask those guys. <laughs> maybe the one, one of the ones tied up. <laughs> I'll be back. Where is he going? Oh, damn, Alex. <laughs> uh, so we're going to ask the, the leader of the uh, guys who got tied up if he's the uh, Brill, whatever it was. Have a, have a cost. Have a cost. No, 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 I'm not Brill. Brill is the man who hired us. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Here we are supposed to meet him at the bandit camp. <laughs> okay, so we, okay. we need to ask for Brill Havacos and then we need to um, find uh, Giles. And ask him if he wants to be in the play. Cool. Sounds good. So, who's playing what? 
Um, so Rogar is going to be the mage slash narrator. Uh, Graven is going to be the is going to be Giles. Bronn is going to be the cleric, and we're going to get Giles to be the fighter slash leader for the second part. Right. Okay. So then, at the end of the play, Graven is going to stab Giles, and everyone's going to think, "Oh, what a good job of acting he's doing." That's yeah. really that's some really realistic looking blood there. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Because we just stab him. Uh, have we got a stage? Do you think with curtains? Because then we could have the curtains fall and uh, we just kind of sneak off before anybody realizes he's really dead. Hey, it's daytime. E either that, or um, <laughs> we we just close the curtains and then uh, quickly get our armor back on and jump out and start fucking them up. Turns how many there are. <laughs> Although it did, they did say it didn't sound like a huge group of bandits. Are we not wearing our armour under our costumes then? Uh, <laughs> Graven says panically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we could, but I don't know whether how realistic it would look. I, don't know, I think it would look super realistic. <laughs> <laughs> super suspicious. <laughs> Especially for Giles. Giles is a... Uh, okay, okay, yeah, you know, okay, yeah. That Armour could be part of your costume. And a fighter is going to have armour on. Presumably, yep, yep. and a cleric. Yeah, a fighter would go nowhere without armour. He's not exactly. silly. Exactly, go, yeah. You know, I'd say that was getting into the park quite well. Okay. Method and, acting, and, Okay, and as a mage then, Rogar's going to be wearing big robes, so I guess... Uh, yeah, he's got his, his armour in armor armor underneath that. that. Like, uh, yeah, see, it's all coming together now, this plan. <laughs> Can we uh, scratch off the, whatever the name of their company is, and just put A-Team on the side of the wagon? <laughs> <laughs> You don't have enough gold chains for that, so... <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'll speak to Dobson about that. <laughs> All right. We've got a plan. So, should we do a run-through of the play quickly? Yeah, go on, then. Why not? <clears throat> first year of uni rehearsing before we've been... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the fighter is going to be Giles in the actual thing. <laughs> Come on then, crack two. Who's fighter then? Well, it will be the real Giles, but for now, I guess I'll just do it. <laughs> uh, the All right, the then. DM can mock as Giles. <laughs> that sounds like a no. I'm not playing Giles. <laughs> He's not here. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> It's called acting. Pretend you're someone else. I do, regularly, but they're not here, so do it yourself. <laughs> he must be one of the... Like, he's, he's definitely one of the members of the Film Actors Guild. I mean, whenever I hear him speaking, I think, man, he's got to be a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Go right. on, then. Take it away, from the top. Whoever the fighter is, who's standing in. Tomorrow we Bravely fight. And with confidence. <laughs> Tomorrow we fight and end the darkness so that those bandits have brought upon this land. Oh wait, I'm the mage as well. <laughs> 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 True, and we will restore justice to the village in this area. <laughs> village of this I area. I pray to my God tonight for a divine intervention that will bring us help against this mighty band of bandits. I say we kill them while they are sleeping. But I need to rest and uh, recover my spells. We don't need your spells. I'll slice them up. Real oh. easy, like. Tasty. We need to prepare. <laughs> Is that that sound more bored than pleading? <laughs> yes, Giles. We must wait until dawn. Oh wait, and then I become the narrator. <laughs> narrator again. And so, while the rest of the party slept. The uncanny and very cunning Giles Neville left his allies and under the cover of darkness and the sound of night slipped into the bandit camp. And then we go and put on our uh, bandit Yeah, clothes. everyone goes to change his bandits. Uh, Except for Giles. Giles is sneaking around behind the narrator. Giles made his way through the darkness, avoiding, the ha avoiding hazard after hazard and skillfully slipped into the camp. 
and then everyone comes back on as bandits. Using his magnificent disguise abilities, he was able to pass himself off, off as a member of the bandits. He spoke to them and drank with them until he was able to get close enough to their leader. My blades will find their mark this evening. Of that, I am <laughs> certain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Giles is seen milling with others and drinking. Uh, Giles slipped up next to the leader, shook his hand and laughed with him. He then pulled him close and whispered something in his ear and slashed the man's throat with his dagger. Sweet. So at that point, they're, they're, all the bandits would be like, oh my god, what great acting. <laughs> the other bandits watched as their leader's body slowly dropped to the floor. They looked at the body and then at Giles, and Giles raised his arms and said... That man was weak. You should have a strong and intelligent leader. One that will treat you with respect and shower you in riches. That man is me. The great Charles Neville. Follow me and I will show you the glory that should be yours. And then you bow and everyone's, <laughs> everyone's super happy. And then Awesome. And then we get the fuck out of there. <laughs> there you go. Easy. Right. Let's hit, let's hit, hitch up the wagon and go. <laughs> go. Just look about being left. All right. So right. you're going to head off towards the bandit camp now? Yeah. We sure are. All right. I'm not going to bother with a horse and cart. Let's assume that you have it. Um... Uh, uh. Okay, so uh, so you head down the road. Uh, you head for a fair way most of the day, and you get there sort of early afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, and as you rock up outside the uh, bandit camp, you see uh, you rock up. You rocked. You have rocked appropriately. Uh, and you see, uh, you see that Dobson and Alfan were, were correct. The uh, the bandits have definitely set up a toll. Five tents sit on either side of the road, and create a wall-like barrier. An additional, much larger tent sits behind the others, other tents on the left. On the right-hand side of the camp, a large group of men stand around a large boar that is roasting over a low fire. The men appear to be having a very good time. Their laughter is vibrant, and their mugs slush about as they toast one another. Two bandits stand guard along the road, ready to receive you and take your toll. So we're going to pull up in our wagon. We, we pull up in the horse and cart, and we point to the side. So it... All right, yep, all right, yep, uh, come on in, come on in, yep, you're expected down by the stage. If you go down there, there's Bill waiting for you. And it will it'll tell you where to set up and where to go. Come on in, come on in. And they both sort of stand aside. Thank you very much. And you uh, you head in with your with your cart. As you head into the uh, the encampment, you 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 uh, you do just a quick rough count in your head of uh, the amount of bandits you see. And you see a good 20, 25 bandits just sort of kicking around, you know, generally chatting, having fun. There's a few of them sat in the stools. You see there are a large set of chairs sat around what looks to be a fairly makeshift stage on the right hand side. Uh -huh. And you head over down the side of the large tent What's to uh, to where uh, a man, uh, a lanky man dressed in brown leather armor, awaits for you near the stage. He has a hand crossbow hanging from his hip, and he wears a long sword. His long black hair flits in the breeze as he turns and looks at you. Oi, I'm Brill Havercross, and you're the entertainment. The boys are getting restless, so you'd best put on a good show tonight. Giles and the boys are over there, and he gestures towards a group of men on the other side of the road by the uh, by the boar. Uh, he says, you have a 30 minutes to get ready. I'll be bringing the boys over soon. And then he sort of, he gets ready to leave. Um, as he, does, so he just sort of hesitates, turns around and approaches Graven, uh, and he, he leans in close and he whispers, it's all under control. You know what to do. And then he quickly leaves. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, it's all under control. Right? We know what to do. 
kill them off anyway, and we just basically <laughs> snuffed out their plan of doing that. <laughs> well, if they were, it's it's going to make it easier for us, isn't it? We should have asked him if uh, we could get Giles involved before he disappeared. Uh, or... So he sort of leaves you stood by the uh, by the edge of the uh, the, the tent. Um, you got you got a few minutes to set up. Do you want to you, do you want to do anything for the next uh, time, or do you want to just sort of get set up and get ready to well, go? We'll we'll chuck all the costumes up on stage, ready. Uh, is is there curtains on the stage, or is it just a platform? Uh no, it's just like a, a large squareical platform. Okay, so have we got somewhere like a backstage, somewhere to get to? Uh, no, not really. You kind of um, been dumped sort of near the edge of the stage where where Brill was, and there doesn't seem to be anywhere. that's kind of like you know to get changed. You can you, you can sort of duck behind the the, the back of the stage. Should we just say we we park the wagon like there and uh, can hide, yeah. hide behind yeah. it maybe? All right. Uh, yeah, you've also got the wagon which you could get in. The wagon sort of you know over here. Because we need to have a think about our escape route here. The wagon's kind of in this sort of general area here. <clears throat> See the guy that we shot running away over the hill. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, you do, you do notice him actually. He's, it was this guy here as you walked through the through the town, but he didn't seem to notice you. He seemed to be fairly, uh, you know, didn't probably didn't get a good look at you as he as he was uh, running right. away. Okay. Shall we maybe go and uh, try and grab Giles and see if he would like to... Yeah. Yes. All right. Good idea. Do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I come with you? Uh, yeah, it's probably a good idea. All right. So as you as you, as you you come out of the outside of the tent... Um, stop moving for a second. As you come outside of the tent, you see Brill. Uh, he sort of runs over. He says, uh, what, are you, what are you doing? I said, get ready back there. You got, you got, you got to get ready. We were, uh, we're missing a man, and we we're wondering if Giles would like to take part tonight in the play. Ha! Don't be silly. He's here to watch the play. Get back there and get ready. Come on. What are you doing? Um. Now what do we do? Uh, we better go and work out how we do it with three people. <laughs> Was it? Can can you spare anyone to uh, assist us? Well, you're the entertainment co. You should have bought enough people for the play. I suggest you just get on with it. <laughs> Do a good job now. These guys are getting restless. Oh, what do we do now? <laughs> um, let's go wing it. <laughs> no. Um... Either that, or uh, let's just go back over here so we can uh, talk yeah. in private at least. Either that, we could, uh, you know, just burn down the tent and leave. <laughs> See, maybe we just need to do the play really well so that we can meet him. Yeah. So, who's going to be what if we're changing roles now? Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe we should just bail. Uh, who doesn't actually do anything? Well, everyone says stuff. Fighter's got one line. Two lines. Two lines. Crap, we need another person then. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go back and get one of the wizards. Don't give up too easily. You can always, you know, find other ways. Mm. Shall we just go have a quiet word with one of the other bandits? Uh, could do. Yeah, try that. So if we just come round uh, over to here and just ask any one of them if they'd like to make some extra gold. Are you are you doing that or is that the other plan? That that's the plan. I'm just getting the <laughs> others' opinions. Yeah, I don't see how else, what else we can do really. If 
if um, Giles doesn't want to do it. But then we don't know he doesn't want to do it. We've just been told by that guy that he doesn't want to do it. That's true. So he might still be up for it, but... I mean, we could just wait till we go onto the stage and say we need a member of the audience. How about you, birthday boy? Come up here. <laughs> what, and just point at Giles? <clears throat> yeah. Also, if I was going to have a guess... But that is leaving it a bit last minute if he says no. If I was going to have a guess, I would say that he would be in this uh, seat here. <laughs> this, big, this big red seat here. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that's probably right. Are the bandits starting to assemble in their seats, Graham? Uh, yeah, you definitely get that, that impression. It's been, you know, sort of 15, 20 minutes since uh, since Brill left you but back in stage now. There's, you see you see some of the bandits, not all of them, but some of them are starting to mosey on, take their seats. Oh my god, I've got a great idea. Go on. Why don't I get up on the stage and start saying, hello, get the crowd warmed up while someone goes into, like, tent to tent to tent to tent to find Giles and kill him. It's just, Giles is there. He'll be watching this play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what are we going to do about this missing person? We need a backup plan in um, case Giles says no, don't want to do it. I think what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to do the play really well, and then he, we get a chance to meet him because that's so, what the contract says. So I, I think what we're going to have to have is, so the mage becomes the narrator and says a lot, so that's kind of one role. But then uh, we could have someone be um, two roles as like a. Okay. If you imagine someone like standing with their left side facing in one costume and saying something, and then if they, when they become someone else, turn the other way and say say it with a different voice and uh, as a different okay. character, I think that. All be right. F at least fairly amusing. <laughs> okay, we can do that. Who gets the two roles then? Uh, maybe the fighter and the cleric, because they do the least overall, I think. Am I being instead of as well as being the cleric? A fighter, I think. Fighter. Which one is that? The one that says fighter. The one <laughs> bravely and with confidence. <laughs> Alright, so at this point, uh, Brill comes over to you, uh, comes over to you all at the back, and he says, Ah, we're just about ready. I hope you are too. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, I, can I grab, just kind of put my hand on his shoulder and gesture for him to come over this way a minute for a quiet word? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to whisper in his right. ear and just check nobody's <laughs> watching. Whisper in his ear, uh, the plan that we discussed before. Um, just what remind me of that. He sort of leans in close, he just, scowls at you, he grits his, grits his teeth, and he says, Oh, I had a deal. When you and I spoke in the tavern, you agreed to do this for the diamond. Don't you go backing out on me. If you do, you're all dead. <laughs> Dude. He sort of like takes a step back and says, "Right now, uh, which one of you is the opening act?" <laughs> That'll be all of us. <laughs> what did he say? Do this for the diamond. 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 And then he said, "Now, which one of you is the opening act?" You booked other people. This kind of strikes me as a one gig town. <laughs> no opening act? You must be kidding. We paid for an opening act and a main act. And he, he sort of like leans forward, places a hand on the hilt okay. and, says, and says, I suggest you come up with one quickly. 
Rogar's, Rogar's going to grab a couple of... Uh, and walks up. A couple of bits of uh, cloth or something, screw them up in a ball, go up on stage. Breathing fire is a good act. Yeah, he's, he's going he's gonna to start juggling them, and then he's going to set them on fire as he juggles them with his fire breath. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, go on then. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, he's, uh, he walks up on stage, and he starts juggling some uh, balls of cloth. So as you walk up on stage, you <laughs> fairly drunken, cr- drunken crowd who kind of like clap in. <laughs> Graham. Uh, yep. Yeah. Hello. Um, this is going to take me about it's past you. Ron, like a fighter ranger sort of guy, he knows how to set a fuse, correct? Uh, a fuse? I'm not sure you know what a fuse is. Come on, you can soak a bit of rag in a fuel and it would prolong, it would go along the, the rag slowly, right? I mean, you know how to make fire arrows. You know that if you, you let a, an oil soaked rag, it would, would stay alight long enough to fire. But I'm not sure you know, currently know what a fuse is. On. Um. Uh. And Rogar, I need you to roll a performance check. Ah, I was, <coughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. That's better than uh, athletics. Come on, <laughs> yeah! Bron, what are you up to? Um. So Ro- Rogar's busy doing some um, amazing juggling. Spitting stuff on fire. <laughs> if I put a bit of oil on a rope, that wouldn't like give me five, six minutes of burning before it would get to the end of the rope. I'm not entirely sure you'd know what would happen, not having ever experienced that to date. He's a pretty worldly guy. He'd, he'd get the idea. He's done it before. No, I don't think you have. Not that worldly. Do you know my character? Yes. I, I, I know my character. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At which point? At which point the uh, the uh, the whole crowd sort of stand up. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> and they're like you hear wolf whistles and stuff as Rogar's like juggling oh. these flaming balls and then you sort of like you catch them all you take a bow and you uh, you uh, jump off the step at which point Br- Brill sort of come, looks at you and he says nice job keep it up <laughs> and then he sort of like he stands on stage and he says uh, brothers prepare yourself for the main act in honour of Giles Neville the Smith Entertainment Company is here to perform The Night of the Rise. Many of us have heard the story, but only a few witnessed the original occurrence. I hope you enjoy the show. And he starts <laughs> clapping and sort of like steps down from the stage next uh-huh. to everybody else. And everybody else starts clapping. Woo, yeah. Okay, so uh, oh, let's get on the stage then. Throw throw my mage robes on over my armor. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We're just oh. waiting for Bron. <laughs> Is he gone? I don't know. Alex. Is there anybody there? <laughs> He's definitely gone. Gone. Stage fright. It's only me that leaves. I'm back. Sorry, guys. Ah. We didn't even realise you'd left. Didn't know if I should be offended. Get your ass on stage. Alex! Alex! (laughs) Alex! The team came by and said that they're going to start alarming downstairs. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. Um, no, no. Are you going to get kicked out? Are you going to play in the car? I've got the damn fob, so I've got the keys to the place. So. Right. So are we cracking on with this? Yeah. Do we all know who we're playing? Yes. And cleric. And fighter. <laughs> so at this point, Alex, um, Bron has kind of stood up on the stage and introduced you, and everyone's clapping as you've you've taken uh, taken your place on the stage. Hmm. Tomorrow we fight and end the darkness that those bandits have brought upon our land. True, and we will restore justice to the village of this area. 
the other direction. And I will pray to my god tonight for a divine <laughs> intervention that will help us against this mighty band of bandits. <coughs> I say we kill them while they are sleeping. But I need to rest and recover my spells. Pah! We don't need your spells. I'll slice them up. Really the like. Giles, don't be hasty. We need to prepare. I turn to face the other way. <laughs> yes, Giles, we must wait until dawn. Uh, so I step forward now as the uh, narrator. And so, while the rest of the party slept, the uncanny and very cunning Giles Neville left his allies and under the cover of darkness and the sounds of night slipped into the bandit camp. Uh, I think. Yeah. And then we exit the stage. So I'm, I'm going to stay on the stage. Get into our bandit costumes. And then we're back. <clears throat> Giles made his way through the darkness. He avoided hazard, hazard after hazard and skillfully slipped into the camp. Using his magnificent disguise abilities, he was able to pass himself off as a member of the bandits. He spoke to them and drank with them until he was able to get close enough to their leader. My blades will find a mark this evening of that I am certain. Joel slipped up next to the leader and shook his hand and laughed with him. He then pulled him in close and whispered something into his ear and slashed the man's throat with his dagger. The other bandits watched as their leader's body slowly dropped to the floor. They looked at the body and then at Giles and Giles raised his arms and said That man was weak! You should have a strong and intelligent leader one that will treat you with respect and show you riches. That man is me, the great Giles Neville. Follow me and I will show you the glory that should be yours. <laughs> <laughs> the end. So, so we're all going to do a nice little bow. Yep. You hear the... Uh... <laughs> So I raise my power. arms up. I do another bow. I do a victory lap Cross around the stage. Woo! Um go. I they seem to be quite expectant of uh uh you know an encore and they're kind of clapping where even Giles has sort of stood up and is clapping and the all the bandits go oh, uh, we oh, kind of oh, make our way to the back oh, of the stage bowing as we walk backwards and then <laughs> get off the stage quickly. Alright. At which point they're still clapping and uh, Giles comes up next year and he goes, Hi, you did well. That's... I've arranged for your private meeting. Giles is a big fan of the performing arts and would still like to meet with you. He sort of, he takes a moment and kind of looks over his shoulder and he, uh, he turns back quietly and says, I'm going to entertain, in quotes, the rest of the camp while you do this. You have 30 minutes. Get it done. <laughs> right. So we're I, we're gonna I go round. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh what? my god! Not <laughs> throw give, a surprise give, party. Give him a massage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we've killed him. What? <laughs> so okay, we're we're gonna wander around and go in to, to his tent. His toenails. All so right. Care of him? No, I meant. Care <laughs> <of him. laughs> yeah, he wanted uh, okay. he wanted Byron here. Maybe we're supposed to give him a new hairdo. <laughs> Where'd Byron go? Just oh, is that? Uh, wait, not, sorry. This is going to go full Jonestown. Okay, so you uh, you you slip round to uh, to uh, Giles's tent, and you enter into into the front of his tent, and find yourselves inside 
a fairly large tent with uh, they're sitting on a large chair lined with plush silk pillows sits Giles Neville complete with the with a uh, he's wearing like a gold studded bandolier of daggers he stands from his chair and uh, walks up to you and uh, and says fantastic truly fantastic I am very pleased with your reenactment of events spot on I spat all over my screens that's how good it is <laughs> Oh, wow. well, thank you, well, thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. You've been rehearsing for days. Weeks, yes, even. Yes, it uh, definitely showed. <laughs> yes, very good. So, uh, did it bring back lots of memories then? <laughs> yes, yes, it was how I... Obviously, as you know, it was how I came in charge of this gang of reprobates. <laughs> Without Indeed. me, they would be cast into the wilds. Lost! ha, ha, ha. I tell you, I tell you, I, I must owe you some money for this grand scene of amazing theatrics. Oh, yes, uh, 100 gold was the price, I believe we agreed. Yes, 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 of course, of course, of course. I will get this for you uh, shortly, very soon. Well, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> now then, do we just attack him, or <laughs> what do you reckon? I are kind you, of are uh, you saying this out loud because no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm just kind of looking at uh, Rogar and then at Bron and then back at Rogar again. <laughs> Rogar just kind of rests his hands on both his swords. <laughs> Yeah. So, tell us more about the bandits and uh, uh, and how long you've been their leader for. Well, I've been their leader for uh, a few weeks now, and we have set up our amazing outpost here, only to grow and take over these wilds. Hmm. Um. Do we notice anything uh, like what this chest is, for instance, what these things are up here? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you uh, you can see that there is a there is a lot, fairly large chest over this part of the uh, of the. It's a small wooden chest, actually. Um, it's from where you can see it looks closed and there's a lock on it. You can't tell anything else. Everything else just looks like fairly tenty type stuff. You know, there's the bed, the large chair, desks for writing, that sort of thing. Not that he looks like somebody who would write too much. Okay. Well. <clears throat> uh... I say, uh, look at Graven and say, uh, you've only got half an hour. <laughs> yes. Well, we have we've got one more surprise for you, actually. Oh yes, is this more of your fantastic theatrics? Uh, Ro no. Rogar, I draw my sword on him, <laughs> and Rogar <laughs> grabs his swords as well. And uh, uh, attack okay. him. Okay. Graham. Hello. He with advantage because I am indeed flanking him. Too That's long. correct. Oh, do, does he look surprised? He definitely looks surprised. So we get a uh, uh, free action then? Is we that... are currently not in initiative. But I can strike him with my so sword. So does 11 hit? Uh, 11, what, where'd you get 11? Who asked me about 11? Alex. Bron. Uh, Why are you asking me about 11? Oh, yeah, uh, 11 does not hit. Okay, That's... but I get two goes, so long sword. Does 21 hit? 21 does hit. Does 15 hit? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> How do you do a fantastic two damage? Uh, Rogar, you asked me, does what hit? 15. 15, 15 does hit. And 10. Uh, okay, that's more like it. No, no, that did 8 damage, but does 10 hit? Oh, 10 does not hit. Okay. All right, uh, and I will attack him, and I've got advantage because I'm flanking too. Yes, you so. do. <laughs> you're gonna, you're 
Watch how it's done, boys. <laughs> 26. <laughs> that hits. So that's six slashing damage for my first attack. Okay. And then my second attack. 18. That hits. That's another six damage. I will um, use my action surge to go again. Okay. That's a hit. Of course. So that's 11. And last one. 25. <laughs> and I'll make that a pushing attack okay. as well. So that's 11 plus uh, another 2. So 13. Okay. And he and has to make a... You oh, he needs to make a strength save. Yeah. Oh, hang on. That's plus on. <laughs> Difference. Yeah, you shoved him. Okay, In so we get back you slag. Um, I push him back. Dead. Yeah, 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 kind of, yeah. And I can yeah, use my movement to follow shove him up. him into the bed, yeah. All right, are we in initiative now? Uh, you are now in initiative, yes. Okay, so it's my go oh, now. Yeah, not roll my initiative. Rolled yet. No. Oh, I rolled 22, but it hasn't added it to the tracker. Okay, I'll do it the normal way. You know the rules. <laughs> Well, I guess that macro doesn't work then. Did you click on your token first? Yeah. Oh. That's oh, right, 23 you'll do. 20, 22, you know the rules. You only get one roll. Oh, well, 22 better. then. But it didn't... Whichever... But it didn't I go thought... in, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, but if it goes in the second time, then it's better. You still have to take the last one. Those are the rules. That's a lame rule. Yeah, well, yeah. Learn, learn how to use roll 20. That's the yeah. lesson oh, that this rule is teaching. Well, I thought the macro would work, but obviously it didn't. Wow, whose fault is that? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, and then Graven, you're up. All right, so you okay. like, shut dude. Where'd Rogar go? He's disappeared off my screen. Uh, uh, I'm, sta I'm standing like in front of him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am going to slash at him again with my sword. Good plan. 15. That hits. That's 13 slashing damage for the first one. Okay. 22. That hits. Seven slashing damage for this. All right, one. so you guys, you uh, you will basically jumped on him and Bronze stabbed him with his long sword. Rugar swiped him with his sword. Graven like pulls out his dragon sword and then like shoves him away towards the bed as he he hits the bed and, uh, uh, and Graven just runs straight out to him, pulls out his sword again, slashes once straight through the chest, whizzes the sword round. Plunges it straight through his heart and kills him where he stands. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> right. Well, that was quick. <laughs> that was easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, can we do a quick search of him? Yeah, uh, go of him? the chest. Can? What's I'm, in the chest? I'm going to uh, look under on. the bed. <laughs> uh, yep. All right. So, uh, Alex, don't move. Graven, you find uh, he's got five gold rings on him. Uh, they're worth 25 gold pieces each. Uh, he it's also got uh, a little pouch that holds 15 gold pieces, 15 silver pieces, three small emeralds worth 10 gold pieces each, a small brass key, and a set of thieves' tools. Bron, what were you up to? Brass key, come on. Let's open no, no, this chest. no, you didn't know about this brass key. What, what were you up to? Bring the key with the brass chest. No, you don't have the key. The key does not exist in your life. All right. I'm using the key. I'm using the brass chest to open the key. What? There is no key. What key are you on about? All right. When it's my go, I'll shout out. I got a key. <gasps> you got a key? I got a hole. <laughs> All right. So Graven passes you the key. What do you do? I don't know. Open the box, presumably. Man, I hadn't thought about doing that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so as you uh, as you put the key in the lock, you hear a click, click, and the lock opens. You open the lock, at which point I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw, please. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, so as you open the lock, you hear a you hear an almighty crackle come streaming up through your arms, uh, and you take that much damage. Ow. That's nasty. Would have literally killed Mike. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> Did he manage to get it open, though? He, yeah, it's open. It just hurt. <laughs> okay. How loud was that on a scale of one to audible by the guards outside? 
Uh, not audible. It's kind of like it was loud to you, but that's because it vibrated up. And so what's check, in the box? Uh, it's 200 box? gold pieces, 150 silver pieces, 10 rubies, 10 diamonds, and 10 emeralds, each worth 50 gold pieces. Wow. Stick that in a bag. Right, guys. 10 rubies, book. 10 emeralds. Um, while this is happening... What was the it's other in one? Discord, Mike. I've put it in there. Oh, you're putting it in there? Okay. I, I have put um, it in there. Oh, yeah, sorry. Can, I see it now. Can we drag his body and hide it under the bed? <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can we just have a rummage under the bed, the, the chair, um, and these other desks? Yeah. Just have yeah, check if there's anything else. Uh, yeah, you don't find anything else in the room. The main the main sort of uh, reward would seem to be in the in the chest. Okay, and I'm going to hand Bron the health potion that I'm carrying. Okay. Um, <laughs> right, now, that looked like it hurt. Now, how do we want to get out of here? Do we want to go out the front and see that guy who we made the deal with, or do we just want to sneak out the back mm. and cut all in the back of the tent? We, we definitely want that diamond. Okay, this is going on the assumption that we were supposed to kill this guy, and he's going to be happy about it, rather than... <laughs> well, if we just go out else. and say it's done... And, uh, we should cut a hole in the back of the tent and just get the fuck out of here. I don't know. That diamond sounds... <laughs> yeah, there are also a hell of a lot of uh, bandits out there. I mean, he told us that we had half an hour and that we had a private audience with him, so I'm pretty sure we were supposed to kill him. All right, well... <laughs> Have you ever known Graham to lead you wrong? N never. <laughs> All oh, right. Well, it sounds more fun to go out the front. Let's go out the front. <laughs> Is there anything else on these tables, desks, things? Uh, no, nothing really. Just a few papers and nothing particularly of importance. Um, he was. He, was he wearing some gold daggers? Did you say? Uh, he had kind of like a golden bandolier on. Um, but now you look at it uh, up close, it doesn't seem to be real gold. It seems to be more of a fake. It doesn't seem to be fake, worth much. Fake tat. Yeah. Oh, I'll leave that then. Go right, on, he's, uh, he's, he's hidden under the bed then. Yep, all right. So as we go out, I'll just look behind and just check there's no obvious signs of a horrible murder in this room. <laughs> no, it seems to be quite swift. You, most of the blood is under the bed. With, so, uh, okay. With, so with, with, with the, with the so any, anybody walking in here wouldn't think anything untoward? Uh, probably not, no. Not without a bit of investigation. All right, okay. Okay, yeah, treasure chest shut. <laughs> All Good right, idea. so you uh, exit and you're back in the, uh, the, the. You know, it's now that the the bandits are kind of milling uh, out of the uh, out of where they were and sort of heading back. Kind of some of them are heading back towards the the pit, the fire pit, and a few of them are still sort of sat there chatting. You know, they seem to be very merry at this point. They're quite drunk, quite loud. Uh, and you see Brill is sort of like stood by the exit to the uh, to from the from the encampment. So should we just walk over okay. to him and... Uh... Do we want to get our cart? So if things turn nasty, we can just oh, get going with the cart. I suppose so. Well, we're, yeah. we're, we could run back to the cart. All right, okay, all right. We should put half of the loot in the cart just in case we get searched. Mm, I don't think that's likely. Yeah, all right. Should, should we just going to say, say it's done? Yeah, or well, we'll just give him a nod. Uh, Rogar just walks over there and says, uh, it's done. Says, ah, yes, well, uh, thank you for your uh, performance. It has been most enlightening. And he sort of hands you a, a large bag. Um, and as you look in the bag, you see it's uh, it's got a, a fairly large diamond in it. You reckon it's probably worth about 100 gold pieces. <clears throat> Rogar says, thank you, and then uh, just walks back to the others and uh, nods. And then we go round here to our car, I guess. That's fine. Yeah, okay. And let's GTFO on our car. Now, guys, once we're clear, we should probably start picking them off one by one. Okay. Are we going to fight all of these, are we? Well, one at a time, you know? <laughs> one at a time um, in a camp, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, no. We get in the cart, we get out, 
and then we find somewhere on the outskirts of the camp where we can pick them in and off as they're going in and out of the camp. Okay, we've so just, we'll we've just instilled new management. It's not going to go away. We'll lay up a little way down the road then and see if uh, any come wandering down. Yeah, let's get out of here first, and then we'll have a think. Jolly good. Let's crack on. Because yeah, you're right. We haven't really solved the bandit problem, have we? We've just changed robbed it <laughs> and robbed them. <laughs> <laughs> but there is quite a lot of them, although they are drunk mostly. So hung over and angry tomorrow <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, the fact they're drunk might not matter if they all just charge at us and uh, start swiping yeah okay so we're going to head out where okay or <laughs> we basically become expert middlemen and we use the money we stole to hire mercenaries to go in and clean them out nah that sounds like a waste of money and XP <laughs> true well, mercenaries Okay, well, let's go and return the cart to the people we tied up. And we'll think about what the next step should be. The people that we tied up have a plan to murder this guy, then? It looks like it, doesn't it? Let's go speak to them. Yeah. Let's go find out what the plan was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully it was murder them. Okay, so we're going to head back to the woods where we left the people. Okay, so you head back out from... Uh... Yeah, from where you were, and head back down to the uh, the guys who you find they're still tied up. They uh, they don't look too much worse for wear. They look like they may have uh, had a bit of, bit of a scary night. Um, one of them's tried to like get himself untied, but seems to be more tied up than when you left him. <laughs> uh, noobs. So uh, we're just going to um, ask the. So what was the plan then? <laughs> well, we're, we're going to ask this guy. Yeah, what what was the plan? Uh -huh. Oh, okay, we'll take his, fine. We slap him around. We gag him again. Take his gag out of his mouth. <laughs> he says, oh, 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 what plan? Did you ruin the performance? What was the plan to take care of? The I do plan you air quotes. <laughs> take care of. The plan you had with Brill. Oh, oh yes, and he... Uh, he me and uh, I, I, it was uh, very dark, you see, and uh, he, uh, he, he wanted me to uh, slice the, uh, the, the Giles Neville man uh, in, in two. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could have done it, but uh, it was uh, well, more gold than I'd seen in a long while, I tell you. <laughs> ah, well, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might have done your job for you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh <laughs> Uh, don't kill me. Well, that's why right. he probably thinks we're you. Guys, <laughs> a great idea. We'll just what? leave them tied up. When the bandits come down this road looking out for the travellers, they'll find these guys. I don't think they'll know who's who. They'll kill these guys and we'll be fine. What, what happened to your moral, moral objection earlier of leaving them tied up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they violated the non-aggression principle by, you know, saying that they were going to kill them. <laughs> Oh, by the way, you can all have an amazing inspiration point for your amazing play. <laughs> very, I was very impressed. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so what are we going to do then? Because we've not really solved the problem of the bandits, have we? Because they're still there. But I'm not sure I fancy taking on 20 bandits. Three of us. Not with Mike. Mm. Um, well, we could go and... Um camp out on the road and just see if any come down that way and uh, hey. ambush hey, him Mike. yeah guy and say <laughs> camp out <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah we could just ambush them if a few come along and then more might come along to him yeah alright it's now getting on for fairly late uh, late evening it's starting to get a bit dus dusky okay Well, all right, well, maybe we kind of hide in the trees, it's kind of beyond the tree line, so we can see the road. Leave these guys here around the fire again, tied up. See if anybody comes along here. And if they do, and we can manage it, we nip out and kill them. 
Okay, I need a wee though, so uh, you come up with a plan, a bigger plan, a better plan. That plan is fine, but I'm gonna go for a wee. Okay. <laughs> that plan is fine, but also it's shit, so you come up with a better <laughs> one. <laughs> um. Do, 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 do. So what do you reckon, just hang around and wait for some of them? Yeah, see if or they come along the road. Maybe we leave it for another day and come back and get them with more people? I don't know. Well, the thing is, there's quite a lot of them. I mean, even though they're not bandits, aren't that tough, but that's still quite a lot of attacks in a round. Ah, oh, spoken like someone that regrets being robbed of all of your armour and stuff. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Going back to Flamescar, but I am concerned, and especially while Graham's out of earshot, that this big encampment of bandits might come knocking on Flamescar's door. Yeah, but they don't know we're from Flamescar. As far as they know, we're the Smith <laughs> Entertainment Company, which is these guys. Tie up these guys, they are loose ends. Plus, so I think the other guy's going to... Um take over the bandits now so i think yeah it was his plan he's just he's gonna just take over and uh, they're not gonna worry too much about giles maybe i don't know what their loyalty is like to him but yeah. yeah but even if he takes over there's still gonna be bandits on the road which oh is yeah, yeah. so, so out, if, we, isn't it? if we go back up the road and camp out and just at least wait for a couple and uh we can hmm kill them and try and capture one and find out what's going on up there if they're still camped out or whether they've disbanded or yeah didn't dobson say they would, they'd set up like a toll yeah there, there were two guards on the road and it looked like they were collecting tolls for people that went through oh was that on the at the camp was it yeah there were there were two guards ah. that has passed if you remember oh yeah yeah I am back, I think by the way. Back. I'm just listening. Oh, okay. The, at the entrance to the camp, that was the toll booth that Dobson was on about, is it? That's right, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, I reckon we hide in the trees here and wait to see what comes along. Um, should we untie them and give them their wagon back and tell them to get out? <laughs> um... What's their motivation for killing that guy? Was it just money? I mean, it sounded yeah, like it. He said huge diamond. It, it was more money than he'd ever seen. So, the thing is, if we let him go, bad. what's to stop them just saying uh, the guys who did this there? Mind you, are the bandits even going to come after us? Because, like you said, it was their plan, wasn't it? Well, it was his plan. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess... We just Let's just go here. back to Flamescar and go back next session or something. I don't know. We can... Uh... Not fast. I got the loot. We've been short of money. Yeah, could do. I think we should at least go and wait out and just see if any bandits... Yeah, come let's see if any way. comes past this way first. If nothing happens, then maybe uh, head back to Flamescar. Okay, let's go do that. So we're going to so. are we going to camp out here and we're going to tell these other people to leave? Um, I don't. We just leave them tied up for now. Because if anybody comes along here, they're going to go. Oh, they're tied up, and they might go and investigate, and then we can, you know. Okay, so what, we're going to we're going to leave them here, and we're going to hide in the trees. Yes. Sounds like a plan. Various consequences. <laughs> yes. Okay, so at this point it starts to get quite dark. All right. Uh... Has their campfire gone out then? It has, yes. Because they've been tied up, they haven't been able to keep it stoked over the last 24 hours. <laughs> uh, Graham, if we notice that, we'd top it back up because we don't want them getting eaten during the night. So come on, we top back up the campfire before it goes out. Well, I mean, it would have been out when you got back, but you can certainly light another one. Lit when we got back. All right, we lit another one, and then get back in the trees. All right, okay, so you're going to wait here for uh, 
See if you are you gonna wait the entire night to wait and see if anything comes back or yeah. Okay, Why so not? you spend the night in the trees all keeping fairly alert, fairly watching watching out across the trees, uh, down the path, although you can't see too far, but you listen out for any of the sounds of hooves or uh or anything else, but you don't uh over there as the night draws draws on you get more tired your eyes start sort of closing you wake yourself up um, but you don't notice anything coming down the uh down the path or towards you and um, you do hear a few sort of uh snarls at some point from the uh the trees behind you um, but nothing uh, seems to come too close to the fires and before you know it uh, eight or nine hours have gone and it's morning again hmm. Well, I guess they're not coming then. Well, perhaps we should let these guys go then. Head back to Flamescar. Should we do that? Well, untie him and let him go. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll untie them, and we'll say, "You ain't seen us, right?" <laughs> and uh, let them go. Okay. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, uh, before the mage kind of like hits you. Starts running down the road, and uh, the, the, the three others sort of follow behind him, not too far. Don't forget your wagon. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's okay, you can keep it, you can keep it. Still run away. <laughs> Jump on the yeah. horse. All right, well. <laughs> so you try to jump on the horse again. This time, not quite landing as badly, but still landing fairly on the back, crushing your balls underneath you, the weight of your heavy armor. <laughs> you go, as, as the horse goes, and, and again throws you off, and you take another <laughs> two bludgeoning damage. Uh, wait, because I need to take my health off. Uh, so I've taken my health off. And I'm going to go around, look it in the eye and be like, right, I know you. It won't end well for you. And I try and get back on more respectfully. Okay. <laughs> At this point, you you try and get on, but the horse is uh, still not having any of it. And uh, throws you off again, <coughs> straight onto your ass. <coughs> you take four damage. <laughs> Killed get... by falling off a horse. <laughs> Get up. I walk around to the front of the horse. I look at square in the eye and punch it in the face. <laughs> um, feel free to make an attack roll. Four, because it's unarmed. No, no, you need to roll your attack roll. I think I hit a horse. It's not whether you hit it, it's whether you damage it. All right, so you like you try and punch the horse straight on the nose, and it's sort of like it moves its head, and you punch it straight on the forehead, and you, it just sort of like looks at you, and then sort of stands up and goes, <laughs> and and tries to kick out at you, clefting straight through your armor, <laughs> and doing three damage. <laughs> uh, Rogar's just gonna laugh at Bron. Yeah. I just shake my head. Gonna punch it again. Watch the horse fight. <laughs> oh, hang on, that wasn't that wasn't too damage. That was uh, it was uh. <laughs> I'm not gonna waste my healing potion on you if you're gonna get killed by a horse. You know it that. Was you? Eight, it was eight damage you took, <laughs> and you're gonna try and punch it again. Yeah, this time you hit it. You managed to actually damage the horse. You took eight. <laughs> Bron punches a horse to death. <laughs> All the damage. Moral, I don't want to tie yeah. these people up, Bron. <laughs> Did you take four damage? Punching a horse. <laughs> <laughs> my roll to a horse. You have to roll your attack. Oh, it's 1d4 because you're punching it. 
All right, you do two damage. Right, I'm oh, going to... smack him. Hello? And do a mind meld and get back on the horse. All right. At this point, the horse just like throws you off. It <laughs> goes. Oh, and, uh, and you take four damage. <laughs> At which point, the horse tries to bring its hooves down on top of you as well. Not quite managing to hit you, but like kicking out of you, looking pretty fierce. I'm gonna kill this fucking horse. <laughs> oh. I walk away from the horse, and I eat a carrot in front of it. <laughs> Opportunity okay. attack, surely. The horse trots up to you and s- tries to s- like hit you again in the face. Turns around and kicks at you. <laughs> Um, I see this coming and move back. <laughs> you move <laughs> the back horse, the horse itself and it's flicks this around, doesn't quite manage to catch you. Graham? Hello. It rolled a one. It did roll a one. So doesn't that mean like it damages itself? It didn't manage to damage itself. It was doing alright. So, um, what were we doing before Alex started punching a horse? Don't know. I think we're going to No, no, I think you find the phrases before Alex started getting beat up by a horse. (laughs) I think we were going to head back to Flamescar, weren't we? I'm going to just get in the back of this wagon and I'm going to take a short rest because I'm fucking humpy at the minute. (laughs) (laughs) So, so Bron's gone for a sulk. Oh, yeah, actually, that's a good that's a question. Do you get one hit dice per level? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Fresh now. Might go punch another fucking horse. <laughs> <laughs> so we wait here tonight and no one came, so we we just gonna head back to Flame School? No, we don't wait here the night, we just wait here for like an hour. No, you did wait here for the night. Yeah. And then this morning you started punching a horse and getting beaten up by one. So would that have counted as a short rest waiting the night there? Uh, no, because you were kind of on watch and oh, alert okay. the whole time, so okay, uh, you didn't really have any time to sort of relax. Fair enough. Um, well, I guess we head back to Flamescar then. Should we try and take these horses with us? Taking the car... So who wants to hook the horse up to the cart? Because I don't think I get on very well with them. Yeah, I'll go. I'll have a go. My animal handling is rubbish, but I'll try it. My animal handling. (laughs) Right. Oh, let's give it a go. No, I just smacked him. You're just trying to hitch it up, right? Yeah. You're just trying to jump on the back. Yeah, so you hitch it up, just Yeah, Yeah, just trying to lead it over. Okay. Yeah, so you lead both the horses over and hitch them up to the cart. Not too difficult. Okay. All right. With the horses hitched on the front of the cart, I, I move forward from the back of the cart and I tap the one that I'd punched to be like, Hello! <laughs> I wish for the horse oh, for like, goes, Rrr! and the other one does, Rrr! and the, both of the horses just like bolt. Alex, you get thrown on your back in the cart and the cart just like canters away, away from Grove and, and Rogar. <laughs> I yell out, I must go, my people need me! <laughs> mm. Is this Bron still in the cart? Uh, yes, he is, yeah. And he's just raced off that way. Yes, Come on, guys, yes. get in the cart. <laughs> Rogar just looks a grave in his size. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to walk. <laughs> All right. Cart. So he, you guys are just going to sort of wander behind where the yeah, car went? Yeah. All right. So, Alex, you're, uh, you, you're trapped in the car as it's like racing down the path. You, hear, you can hear the thundering of the hoods. <laughs> you can't stand up, though, because it's going so quick that you like you struggle to get your feet. You get thrown around. <laughs> you get sort of thrown around from side to side in the car. Eventually, the car starts to slow down a bit and uh, get more, to, more to a trot. Um, and then eventually pulls up to a, to a stop completely. 
uh, and you find yourself uh, by as you sort of get up and look out of the car, you see that the uh, the horses have stopped in front of what seems to be a a, a, a fairly large uh, gang of wild horses that seem to be across the path, and your horses have just started sort of like grazing next next to these other ones. Oh shit! Um, Don't punch them, Alex. <laughs> Graven and Rogar kind of like wander up about an hour behind you, kind of just slowly wander. Like, oh, all right. I Do stay we... very quiet in the back of the van. Mm. Do we see any uh, anything else other than the wild horses? Uh, no, you just see lots of wild horses. Seem to be some sort of troop of wild horses. They're kind of like just generally wandering around, eating the green grass. All right. Um... I'll try and make my way past them, um, acting as non-threateningly as I can. Just kind of giving them a bit of space. Okay. Uh, roll an animal handling check as you want the pass. John. That's your horse. Ooh. That's 17. Yeah, I see you sort of like wander around them fairly fairly easily. They kind of uh, don't, don't do too bad. But as a... As Rogar kind of wanders up behind you, the uh, the horses they all uh, they all turn and, and and look at you and and stop kind of doing what they were doing, and <laughs> they all look uh, fairly threatening. <laughs> at me or Rogar? Uh, uh, it's generally all of you at this point. Well, no, not Bron because he's hiding in the wagon, but uh, <laughs> Graven and Rogar. Um. All right, I just kind of stand still, and. Um... Stand uh, very still. <laughs> yeah, and and don't make any threatening gestures or anything. Say nice horsey. Okay, so you sort of stand there. They all just sort of stare and look at you. And after a short period of time, they uh, they start to sort of, some of them start to put their head down and start eating some more grass. All right, um, but a few of them still staring at staring at Rogar, Rogar, <laughs> Reagan. Rogar, <laughs> he's. I'm gonna have a look in the uh, wagon and just check Bron's okay. Okay, so you see, you look in the wagon. Bron's just kind of like laying in the back of the wagon, having a bit of a rest after his uh, <laughs> after his experience. Say, I Free fucking stuff. hate horses. <laughs> <laughs> Rogar's just gonna climb in there and uh, grab the health potion of Bron and just walk back out. <laughs> hey, give me my health potion. <laughs> It's too much of a liability. Um, I'm going to try and carry on creeping around these horses. Oh, okay. Yeah, Rogal's going to follow him. All right. So, uh, uh, again, I need you both to roll a animal handling check. See how you get on as you sort of wander past the, the edge of the... Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I rolled, the, I rolled the exact same thing again. <laughs> You did. You're right. Uh, so at this point, oh, you're like they don't reseed the random number <laughs> generator. As as this this particular horse here starts getting really rowdy and like thumping its feet on the floor, and uh, and before you know it, all of the horses start charging at you. Oh shit! Uh, and I'd like you to roll initiative, please. Ah. Uh. Damn it. God fuck man. Fuck. <laughs> this is Graham's you finished the game too early, so I'm going to create some bullshit encounter for you guys. I'm sorry, do you, are you not enjoying this DD session? I don't like horses. <laughs> That's why I put them here. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So Bandits are... could have legitimately come after us. Could have Come on, Graham. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, right. but that's another game in the bag right there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I should have just done these as one thing. <laughs> you can just roll it as one for each group, can't you? Fine. Where's, yeah. where's the turn tracker? <laughs> You haven't sorted a turn tracker yet, Graham. I know. 
again. Hello. Ah, I thought you'd gone. No, I said I know. <laughs> I've just put on the dramatic battle music. <laughs> Horse battle music. <laughs> uh, all right, and Groven, you're up. All right, I'm going to leg it. <laughs> uh, um, what do I want to do? Do I really want to fight all these horses? I mean, how strong are horses, really? I know, but that's not the point, is it? <laughs> Think of all the horse meat we'll have to sell. Oh, I'm going to take a dash, so I'm going to dash to so that's 60 feet to here. Okay. Uh, that's, no, that's all I'm doing. Okay. Uh, at which point the uh, couple of the horses run sort of across Mike or Rogar and uh, clatter at you with their hooves. What I'm hitting as it straight past you and does nine bludgeoning damage. Oh shit, I'm going to die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Do get a, a no. type of opportunity at the one that ran straight past. Uh, and you don't hit. <laughs> what, even with a 12? Well, you, be, you roll a 5 first. Okay. <laughs> and then, Bron, you're up. Right. So, <laughs> from, from right. remaining inside the horse and cart, okay, on a ruling on whether if whether taking a knife to the side of the sheet of the canvas cart to make a window would be classed as an action or not? Uh, probably, yeah. But I can still shoot out of the front of the cart, no problem, right? Sure. Kneeling inside the cart, I aim the arrow forward towards this guy here. Okay. Do longbow. Uh, that hits. Okay. Five damage. Okay. Nah, Graham. Be like double that size. There's yeah, but that'll do for now. Didn't kill it. I'll attack this one again. So 13. Okay. That hits. Is it dead? Uh, it is not dead yet. I, I changed to attack this one using my second wind. Which one are you attacking? Sorry. The All right. Rogar. Okay. Yep. <laughs> ah. Boom. That hits. What's the rule about damage with a crit? You get double your damage dice plus your modifiers. I'm glad that we said that. So because I've got a 20, I've got a crit, what I'm going to do, deploy my sharpshooter feet, okay? That mean I can drop five off that 27 but gain double the damage. Uh, you'll get you won't get double the plus 10 because it's not a dice roll. Get. Graven, that's right, isn't it? Graven, yeah, right. you only yeah. double the dice that you roll. Dice. Yeah. No, no, nothing else. Double the dice plus 10. Yep. Plus your modifier. Yeah, so you get, you get 6 Six. plus 10, 16. Cool. 16. That's got to kill it. Uh, that's does not quite manage to kill it. What the hell? They're fairly large horses. Large Attack. aggressive horses. Yeah, oh, man. We're so dead. Oh, I am. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use sharp, 
sharpshooter on that, so that's a uh, 60. Yellow hits, uh, yellow hits, yellow hits. Which 20. one? The same one you attacked before, this one? Sorry, no, that's 21. Yes, this one here. Uh, yellow hits. And kills it? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, that one's dead. That's my go over. Okay, uh, at which point? One, two. Everything but. Okay, at which point? Uh, a few of them turn around and clatter towards Graven. Uh, so that was five of them that have attacked you. Four of them have sort of run straight past you, so you can attack one of them if you like. As mm -hmm. a attack opportunity. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, and you don't get hit by any of them, as per usual. And I will make an opportunity attack on one of those horses. Anyone in particular? Well, that hits. Uh, uh, that one that went past me. Okay. 28. 10 points of damage. Okay. So, yeah, as it runs past, you just like, you duck, you duck, and they all like clatter over you and you wipe up and do 10 strong points of damage. Uh, and then, Rogar, you're up. <clears throat> um, Alex, how do you have Second Wind set up on your character sheet so you click it? I don't. I mean, I. Uh, I don't. Oh, second you, wind. Yes, I do. Earlier you Sorry. clicked it, and it. Yeah, that, that thing. Ask Gra uh, Graham. Where where uh, does, where does it go a, on a character sheet? It's a thing. I don't know. Uh, I, okay. I stole it off of Graven's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where do you click it, Alex? Where is it on your character sheet? Click my token, which yeah. is me, and it appears in the top left-hand corner of roll twenty. Oh, okay. It's one of. Hang on, Mike. I'll put it. On, I'll put it in for you. Sweet. Discord, so you can see what it looks like. It's a, it's a macroy thing. Fair enough. And uh, is it a bonus action? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, no. Wind, is it? It, it, it's, you can use it whenever you want on your turn. It doesn't take up an action. Yes, it's a bonus. It's a, action. It's a bonus action. Second wind. Yeah. Mike. Wait, you mean action? You've got action surge anyway. That's not second wind. Yeah, no, I have second wind as well. Do you? Yes. It's not in your character sheet. Yes, it is. It's just not. It's just it's not. not on your character. It's oh, not it is, in the so, right yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. That's why I can't click it. <laughs> oh wait, second. Second wind is a standard action. Oh no, that's Fory. That's no good. Who cares about Fory? Literally no one. <laughs> what are you up to, Mike? Uh, trying to work out how Second Wind works. <laughs> uh, it is officially now in your character sheet. If you click on your token, it will show up, and you click on that, and it does that, and it's amazing. Okay, yeah, I just had to re click it. I'll work out someday how to add it onto uh, as a macro. Okay, bonus action. Bro, I sent the picture to Discord. Yeah, I don't look at Discord. I'm busy. Okay. Um, right, so I'm going to run up behind this horse, and I'm going to hit it. Running up behind a horse, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and I'm going to do like no damage. <laughs> Uh, you, you. Why are you running with two weapons? Because you got two weapons. Because I have you two weapons. You hit with the short sword, but not with the scimitar. 
Yeah, I'll mark your second wind set up correctly now. Okay. Just FYI, I'm not using it at the moment, so... Yeah, no worries. I don't so think that I did anything. I, I hit the horse for 8 damage. 8 damage. Okay. Was that with your Simmer's short sword? Yeah, and then I think I'm going to use my action surge to do it again. Okay. They both hit. So yeah, you cleft it in twain, as they say. Sweet. Uh, oh wait, hang on. Sorry. Um, it is entirely your go, except I forgot half of the horses still had a go left. So finish your go, and then it'll be their go. Okay. Uh, so then I'm going to use uh, my movement to sort of head towards Graven, I guess. All right. Okay. Uh, so I'm retconning this ever so slightly. These <laughs> horses, a lot of them run directly past you, through you, thundering through you with their thunderous hooves. Oh shit! Ow! Uh, three of them clattering into you as they run past. For a total of 10, 18, 18 plus 7 damage. Um, what's that? 20? Yeah, you're unconscious. 20, 18, no, hang on. 18 plus 7, 25. They're not right. Not quite. <laughs> that hasn't killed you entirely, has it? Almost. No, just, unconscious. <laughs> Right. God damn! I'm not rolling a third character. <laughs> <laughs> I quit, man. Uh, all right, and then Graven, you're up. All right, uh... <laughs> so R Rogos just got stampeded to death. So if I move to here, right? Am I flanking this one? Uh, where are you moving to, sorry? Here. Here. Sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I uh, move to here. If it actually, yeah. Am I flanking there? Uh, yeah. Although I think you just moved out of the range well, of this one, which. Uh, oh, did I? Yeah, because it was next to you. Fair enough. Go on, then. He can have an opportunity to tackle me then. Not that he's going to hurt it. He we might. He definitely no, didn't. He didn't, right? Okay, so I'm going to attack this guy here. This horse. Okay. How about you, horse? How about you? <laughs> I get an uh, advantage. So. That hits. So that's the first one. Eight slashing damage. Okay. And then second one, 16. That hits as well. Another nine slashing damage. It's 17 in total. Yes. Okay, so yeah, it's like you slash into the back of it twice, cut off its entire tail, but it's still standing. I'll keep the tail as a souvenir. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's me done. All right, uh, and then Bron, you're up. I swear, when I'm done with this, this fucking horse must never question me ever again. I choose you. Dean. Which horse are you attacking? One. All right, yes, yeah, so you just fire your longbow out, out of the uh, out of the tunnel thing and kill it. Where is that? I aim for this one that's opposite Graven. Okay. Team. That hits. Does damage. 10 damage. Okay. That's me done. Okay, uh, at which point all the remaining horses turn around and thunder with their thunderous, hoovery, thundery things again. <laughs> and all a thunder past Graven. <laughs> uh, and then these ones all thunder past you again. <laughs> well, all of them. <laughs> all Every of them horse. Thundered past you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
Uh, one of them manages to clatter into you with a with a hoop. <laughs> Does can 11 I... bludgeoning damage. Can I parry that then? Uh, you can. Alright. I'll take five off of that. Alright. And as they thunder past you, one of them's getting really excited. <laughs> And it just will clatter into a couple of the others, doing some damage to them as well. Uh, and then Rogar, you need to throw do, your first seven throw. Do any of those get an opportunity attack running past me? Can I uh, one attack them, any? Yep. Yeah, you can attack Right. Them. Fucking horses. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Opportunity attack. Oh, ten. Uh, does not hit. Uh, it does hit. Yeah, sorry, it does hit. Oh, cool. All right. Twelve slash. Which one damage. did you attack? Uh, this one. Okay. Uh, and then Rogar, you need to throw your first saving throw. Just having flashbacks. He sat in the corner crying. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, it's a fail. Uh, and then, Graven, you're up. All right, I'm going to put my sword away as my free action. Okay. Run over to Rogar. And I am going to use the healing potion I've got on him to bring him back to life and heal some of his... Okay. Points. So that's my healing potion used. Up. You want to roll the hills? Uh, yeah, what do I roll? 2d4 plus 2. 2d4 plus 2. Alright, Mike, so you have 8 hit points. Rugar. What, 8 or plus 8? You have 8, you have eight hit points. Okay. Oh, plus eight, yeah, plus eight, yeah. Eight. No, he has eight hit points. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Mike, there's no such thing as negative hit points. You're either at zero or you're dead. Okay. Right. And I say, get out of here <laughs> before they uh, come back. <laughs> all right. And then, Bron, you're up. These, these fucking horses... Uh, I'm going to shoot this one. Okay. That hits. You're goddamn right. And there's eight damage. I hit. And there's 11 damage, killing it. Where it's running along and you... <laughs> And is it like scrapes down along the floor? Hello, hello, hello. Can you not hear me? Yeah, I hello? can hear you. I can hear you. You just, just... weren't answering. I'm done. I did. Spacing I said you here. I said it died. Congratulations. Dead. All right. Are you done? Hello? Hello? Alex, are you there? <laughs> yes, oh, it's just I... Alex, can't hear me. Could you respond, please? Are you finished with your turn? I'm talking, you're not hearing. No, but I don't think anybody uh, no, is. No one could hear you. No. Yes, I'm done. Sorry. I was being like, I do hit. D is it dead? Is it dead? Is it dead? And then you're like, oh, you kill it. I'm like, oh. All right. Okay. So uh, the uh, the horses are turning, gallop back towards Rogar and Graven. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Three of them run through Rogar. Bra. And where's where have the horses gone? And he dies again. <laughs> uh, Dude, this would hit Mike, wouldn't it? One of them, them clattering into you with their hooves. I'm knocking you back unconscious. Ah, <laughs> oh, fucking damn it. damn it. The other five run through... <laughs> and run back through Graven. Uh, one of those. 
one of them clanging into you with All doing right, nine bludgeoning damage. Parry that. Okay. No <laughs> the <damage>. swarf bastard. <laughs> swarf bastard. <laughs> uh, and Graven gets an attack of opportunity. Woohoo! Because he's still awake. <laughs> Eleven. Diets. Oh, buy me. Uh, eight. Which one? Uh, this one. Did this one run past me? It. They all run past you. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Go on then. All right, and you kill it where it stands. It's a slash straight oh. through the gullet of the uh, the horse and killing it. I'll <laughs> teach him. It's then your turn. Um. Fucking horses. <laughs> I uh, draw my sword again. Okay. And I uh, just leap into the pack of horses. <laughs> and swing at this fucker here. Really okay. bad idea. No. Yeah, it's all right. We're, we're, we're fine. What could possibly go wrong? 28. Come That's on. 16 oh. damage for the first uh, one. Yep. Yeah. So you're like, slashing it proper bad. It's still, it's still alive though. Take my second shot. Take twenty-six. Gonna hit. Uh, for twelve. And you and you, if you've watched that video that Alex sent, that's what you do. You just cut its head straight, <laughs> up, straight off, killing it where it stands. There's blood everywhere, covering your armor, your ears, your up. <laughs> Call him Graven Clegane. Right. Made a graven mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's me done then. Okay, uh, and then Bron, you're up. Okay, I uh, I slap the horse's ass. Okay. Move forward. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it probably would. It just starts galloping off. <laughs> the do, do you grab the reins or? Yeah, grab the reins. Turn it towards this way. Uh, I shoot at this one here. Okay, are you still in the cart? I am still in the cart. Nine. Wait. Superiority dice to that. <laughs> Diet. I deal ten damage. To which one, sorry? That one. All right, and that kills it. It's dead. Shoot to the one to the right of it. The yeah, other hits. Deals seven damage. And that kills that one. You firing bolts all over the shop. Done, yeah. Are you done? Thank you. All right. Uh, at which point, all of the horses and just run through Graven. Uh, all trying to trample him with their with their feet again. Bastards! Opportunity. Yep. Uh, two of them managing to hit, hit through your armor and dealing that many damages. All right, I'm gonna uh, parry again. Uh, okay, so you take 16 damage. 14. Nine no. plus nine is 18, plus three is 21, minus five is 16. Why are you getting the plus three? Because it says plus three. Yeah, but you didn't actually you didn't get roll the critical. That, that oh, right, okay. So it's 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 13 damage. Yep. Okay. For those of you who can add up, that is correct. Uh, I get an opportunity attack on them. Uh, yep, on one, one of them, yeah. Yep. Cool. Oh, fuck that up. <laughs> All right. So, you, so you, as you as you try and like, you parry off one of them, who's like clanging against your armor, but one of the other one kicks you in the side of the face. Ah, one that you weren't quite expecting to hit you, and does a solid four points of damage straight into the jaw. <laughs> oh, really, bastard. 
Okay. Uh, and then it is presumably Rogar's turn. I assume I clear my uh, death saves. Yes, that's right. You start again now. So Yay. that's to pass. And then Graven, you're up. Do, do we still have one healing potion left? Uh, yes, you I... took two, but you oh, took one and gave me. one to Ray Rogar, so Rogar has one. Rogar has one. Mike took mine from me, remember? All right, okay. Oh, he took the just one he just gave so me. I know. <laughs> I gave it to you and then took it away when you started being reckless. All right, I'm going to, first of all, use my second wind to get some hit points back. So, that's seven. At some point, if I actually get a turn, I might use my second wind too. Uh, and then I'm going to... What am I going to do? Uh, I will put my sword away, move over to Rogar, and I will use my one of my healing kit uses to stabilize him. Okay. Uh, that's my go. Okay, so Mike, you're now unconscious but not dying. Uh, Bron, you're up. Oh, there's a lot of time. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> I was. I turn to the, the back of the cart, and I'm going to attack this one here. Okay. He's down. Wait. Which one were you attacking, sorry? All right, so yeah, you fire an arrow straight out of the... You run to the back of the car. Fire an arrow straight into the back of the horse. <laughs> and do 12 points of damage. But... Funny old, does that kill it? No. The one next to it. All right. I'm going to use my super duper sniper thing. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen damage. So yeah, you fire. Managed to, even though it's running away, managed to fire straight into the head of the horse, killing it where it stands. The, the one next to it. You click that one. On the first time, and it didn't kill it, despite the fact that I got twelve. So I thought, well, fine. I'll, I'm changed to that one. All right. Okay. Cool. So that one is dead and that one's alive. Uh, you done? Hello? Bron? <laughs> Are you finished? Yes, right. yes. Alright, at which point the horses dash off and disappear over the uh, over the the hill and far away bloody horses so graham hello do i sense that the the horse never mind <laughs> probably not <laughs> going to say after the horse on the front of this car has witnessed us massacring all of these things do i sense that he has a, a newfound appreciation for the fact that he is at the behest of us. You have no idea. <laughs> um, so at this point, you are no longer in initiative. Um, and it's starting to get fairly dark. It's been quite a long day. Battling horses and stuff. Long trek back to where you are. I feel like this would be a good place to make, maybe make camp for the night. Rest up. Heal up. Ah, oh, Graham. Hello. I cut it open. Like from, from, from neck to tail. <laughs> I scoop it out and I think about getting inside it. Okay. Do you want to get inside it? It smells. <laughs> I thought these things smell bad <laughs> <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so are we going to have a long rest here? And maybe so. let me regain consciousness? <laughs> Vote if he's unconscious. <laughs> if someone could make me a cup of tea, Demstall. that'd be great. <laughs> Rules. So, so you're having a long rest, are we? Yeah, are you going to heal Mike up first or are you just going to have a long rest and wait for him to wake up? Um, oh, who's got the last potion? It's on Mike. me, I think. All right, I'll rummage through his bag and find it and give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, so you pour it down his throat and it gives him 2d4 plus 2 of health. And then long rest, is that what we're doing? Yep, you need to roll your 2d4 plus 2 first. Oh, okay. Oh, Mike rolled it for you. Never mind. Uh, all right, so Mike, you're on seven hit. So Rogar, you're on seven hit points, and uh, you spelt your name wrong in roll twenty. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, <laughs> so I did. I just noticed that. Um, and yeah, I mean that be a good place for a long rest. Cool. Let's uh, get some hit points back then. All right. So as you're uh, as you're having your long rest, are any of you standing watch or? Yeah, I'll stand watch for the second half, if you like. I can also stand watch. Um, uh, oh, well, should we just all take it in turns? All right, okay, so as you guys are... Uh, Bron takes the first watch, uh, and then sort of Graven takes the second watch after having a fairly short rest each. As, uh, as you've uh, been resting for quite a long time now, uh, Rogar's been fairly busy. Uh, he looks like he's been fairly busy. He's not, not resting quite so much, but frantically building and tinkering. And uh, and uh, all of a sudden, you hear an almighty. <laughs> and Rogar exclaims in success. <laughs> I did it. What did he do? <laughs> Exploded. Uh, you see, you see, Rogar <laughs> waving I'd, around I'd... Uh, some sort of like large, not not too large, kind of yeah, about a foot long uh, implement in his hand, and that seems to be of what's made the noise. Uh. Um, what was that? <laughs> uh, so, so Rogar sort of holds it up and shows it to you. And he says, uh, it's a device that many of my uh, shipmates used to carry. And I've been trying to work out how to build my own. What device? <clears throat> As well, uh, it's a long metal tube and uh, you, p <laughs> you, put, uh, you put this uh, powder in the end and uh, a small lead ball in this end. And uh, much like a bow and arrow, but you don't have to pull any string back. Is Mike going gunslinger? Yes, I am. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> awesome. So you, uh, you get to see my amazing new pistol that I've built. Cool. At this point, you will receive 849 XP as well. God damn it. Wow. Are we back in Flamescar now? Or are we... Oh, no, you still where you are. I just... It's relevant for Mike's character. Because <laughs> ah. I'm most definitely level 3 now. <laughs> What's the uh, XP for level yeah, 4? 10k club, baby. 2,700. <clears throat> How long until you guys are, like, level 6, 7? Uh, Not long, ages, probably. ages, probably. probably. <laughs> he just Eight, said he was four, in the 10k club, which means he's not far off the 14k. Uh, I thought it was 16k for level 6. 14 for level 6. Ooh, you're right. I should probably start playing a bit safer. Not, <laughs> not punching horses. Level <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so yeah, you've met you guys now. Have all made it through your long. You're all rested up, fine. Uh, long rest for everyone. Okay. And you get a long rest. <laughs> cool. 
So uh, I guess we're going to continue back to Flamescar and then divide up our loot. Good guys, sounds good. Okay, so you uh, you head back to Flamescar uh, again. Not too an eventful journey. Uh, so fairly, you know. Once you hit the, uh, the the ruined tower, you know now that it's not far back to Flamescar, and you you've been been this way many a time before. Past Horsey Joe stables, uh, it's now a familiar sight to you all, uh, and back into Flamescar proper. Marvelous. Cool. Uh, Should we try and sell some of these uh, jewels to Dobson? Well, I guess we better tell him that I d we haven't quite dealt with the bandit problem. Or ask him if uh, killing the leader has done anything useful. Yeah, okay. So, uh, wander over to Dobson and uh, explain what happened. Tell him that we killed the leader, but the bandits may still be there. Was, oh, oh, yes, oh, so it was true. They were blocking the road, were they? And so I was like, how, so how did you... How did you kill him? Uh, surely there were many bandits. Uh, one of the bandits um, hired a group of actors to, uh, and uh, when we had a meeting with the bandit leader, we killed him in his tent while the others were distracted. <laughs> he slaps his legs. Oh, very, very clever indeed. <laughs> you guys are. And I uh, know what's this. And he points to the, uh, the, 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 the pistol thing. He says, oh, you, uh, you've got yourself a pistol. <laughs> Be uh, be very careful with this, mine. Mm. And he gives you a wink, wink and a nod. <laughs> yeah, so yes, uh, thank thank you for the uh, powder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, you can always come on. Yeah, I don't talk often, but every now and then, yes, yes, yes. I make a special trip. <clears throat> um, we have some uh, various jewels to sell, and uh... I, I see, I see. Uh, I I do. Yes, yes. What have you got? Uh, we managed to acquire. Uh, we've got five gold rings, three small Ooh, emeralds. Takes them all from you and uh, has a, has a look through. He says, uh, "Wow, this is uh, this is quite a quite a hoard you've got here. I am not sure I keep this sort of uh, cash on me uh, on the regular. Uh, I uh, could." Uh, I tell you what, though, I could uh, take them from you and uh, get get you a good deal uh, with my uh, my trading esteem trading colleagues. Take me a few weeks, mine, but I could uh, see right. I'm sure I could get you uh, a solid uh, twelve hundred gold pieces for the lot. You know, mine the seller's fees. Uh, how much would the seller's fees be? Ah, oh, you know, only twenty odd gold for a friend. What do we reckon, guys? Um, yeah, well, I mean, we've got two options, haven't we? Either sell them to Dobson or sell them at um, well, Bastion so Bay. Twelve, yeah, we might need to go to Bastion Bay. Twelve hundred doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, what are they worth? Was it? I think 50 it's gold pieces each. Fifty gold pieces for those ones, a hundred for the diamond, and a bit for the other ones. So it works out at about seventeen hundred gold. Are you trying to sell the, the big diamond as well? Well, I'm just looking at what we've got total. Yeah, maybe... Um, we might get a better price in Bastion Bay, I don't know. Mm, yeah, we could head up to Bastion Bay at some point and sell them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't mind. Up to you, really. Whatever you reckon. Alex? No, I think he's... Oh, he's gone. <laughs> he's back. And he's back. And he's still not here. You couldn't hear me again. Could oh, you no, you're back. Now? <laughs> nope. Uh, cool. You've gone full Graham. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> uh, right. Um, I think we should postpone until Bastion Bay because I think yeah. we should probably take half of the loot to Bastion Bay because they they are pirates after all. Yeah, that's a good idea. Rogar. All right. Well, what about <laughs> we stick all that stuff in the um, you know the bank that we've got set up, and then we'll take it. 
whoever's going to Bastion Bay next time takes it. Yeah, we can divide up the gold we got, though, between us. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 200 plus 15 um, 71 GP each plus an extra one for some I don't know, check that in the vault <laughs> Um, fifty five. Uh, yeah, five silver. So, what's the total loot from tonight? Well, that we without selling stuff, uh. It's 55 silver pieces, 71 gold pieces. So. Don't forget you've got an inspiration point as well, if you haven't marked it down. Yeah. An in inspiration point stack is your rule. That is correct. It? So. Get a reward from Dobson for getting rid of the bandits. He did offer you one. Well, that's true. Did we get rid of them? <laughs> we can wait and hear from the grapevine from Dobson whether they're still there or not next session or something. Cool. Sweet. All right. Well, I think that brings us to the end of today's session. A little bit earlier than normal, but I think you did... Oh, a... That was good. Fun, that was. You uh, certainly... Uh... Fucking horses. <laughs> Fucking horses. Yeah. That was the camera, man. I genuinely yeah. thought you were my bad point. <laughs> <laughs> It helps oh, that Graven is a die. little tank. Graven, what's your AC? 20. Uh, 20. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Graven, can you like, put the initiative tracker up a minute so I can see if I get this macro working? The, the, the uh, initiative tracker order. is up. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Right, I need to leave work, so... <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Alex. See you later. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, it did not work. No, it did pop up and then disappeared again. Did it? There oh, it is. Yeah. Now it Sorry. worked. Let's try again. Yay, it works. There we, there we go. That's cool. Cool. That's easier than rooting through the cat sheet. Great job. You should write a post on the wiki, and that would definitely earn you lots of points on how to do that. <laughs> All right. I will do that. All right. Thanks, Graham. That was cool. Good, good game. Yeah, cheers, Graham. Cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just wish the fucked hard to myself. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, yeah, good job. Good job on the uh, the performance. It was uh, very good, very good. I was <laughs> very impressed. <laughs> a bit different than normal, but it was good. <laughs> it was good. fun. All right, great. Have a, have a good right. evening. Have a good See night. Ya. See you later. Cheers. See you later. Bye.